The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. The Clemson Tigers' entrance into Death Valley has become one of the most revered traditions in college football. An intense tour that begins on a bus, which follows a police escort to the north side of Memorial Stadium. The players then proceed to file out of the bus and congregate at the top of the hill. Suddenly a cannon sounds. The Tigers rub Frank Howard's rock, then race their way into Death Valley for another game day battle. A ritual some describe as the most exciting 25 seconds of college football. The stage is set for another memorable moment in Tiger history as the final month of the 95 football season begins today. It's the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Clemson Tigers live from Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. Coming your way next. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the Exxon ACC Game of the Week this afternoon from Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. It's the Clemson Tigers on homecoming hosting the North Carolina Tar Heels. Hi, everybody, along with Doc Walker, Jack Corgan. Glad you could join us for what becomes an increasingly important ball game with bowl implications because of Virginia's win over Florida State on Thursday night. Well, floodgates are open now. No excuses. Both clubs now have a chance to control their own destiny. For the success of either team this afternoon, it usually is the quarterback. It seems particularly so here this afternoon. First of all, for the North Carolina Tar Heels, senior quarterback Mike Thomas. If he plays under control, the Tar Heels can roll. He's just got to get those interceptions out of his memory bank, go back to the bye week. They had a chance to get back to basics, and if he's on, they can roll. There's Mike Thomas warming up before the ball game. The bye week, as Doc said, a big factor in what he hopes will be a chance to recharge for a four-week stretch drive for the Tar Heels. For Clemson, they've been playing great lately, and their sophomore quarterback, Nelon Green, has been outstanding in terms of elevation of his game. Man, Mr. Excitement, we heard so much about the skills. Now he's putting it together, hitting the open receivers, directing that offense, and with the backs in his backfield, Boy, if he's straight, they could be awesome. Well, for the Clemson Tigers, Nelon Green and company, they want to improve their home record. They're one and three at home, four and oh on the road, but a big homecoming crowd that they hope will be a factor here this afternoon. There is nothing like the run down the hill in college football. We're going to get a close-up look when we return. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By your Carolina Chrysler and Plymouth dealers, home of the minivan store. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. And by First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. Coming here at Death Valley at Clemson, and this huge crowd is ready for a great show. Started off with the run down the hill. Mike Hogwood is at the top of the hill right now. Oh, you wouldn't believe the emotion up here, Jack. These players are all getting a touch of Howard's Rock. You know the history of it as they come on by, guys. That's all right. As you know, they used to have to come this way from the dressing room. Here they go. There it is. The cannon is fired. The team is good. Hey, Doc, you want to get fired up for this game? Come on. I'm going to rub the rock, too. I got the rock. Let's go, guys. We got the kickoff Clemson in Carolina coming up from Death Valley in a moment. The cold front.
sun has come through South Carolina but it's a sunny day albeit a little chilly one for the first weekend of November. The wind at times will gust. You can see what the Tigers have done in this series against North Carolina particularly here in Death Valley. Clemson has not lost to North Carolina here at home since the 1980 season and won last year knocking off then number 12 North Carolina up in Chapel Hill. The Tar Heels won the toss and deferred till the second half. So they'll be kicking off. Scott Caparelli will send it down towards Antoine Wyatt at the top of your screen and Andre Williams at the bottom. More than 75,000 will be in Memorial Stadium for this one. Two teams with bowl aspirations on the line this afternoon. Caparelli with a squib kick. Wyatt at his 10. Antoine Wyatt over the 30 and out to the 36 yard line. Good field position for the Clemson Tigers wearing their all orange uniforms 28 and 6 in their career when they're dressed totally in orange. Neilan Green the sophomore quarterback from Yonkers New York coming off an outstanding ball game against Georgia Tech a week ago had a good game in the upset of North Carolina last season at Chapel Hill. Clemson with their familiar eye formation with Smith ahead of Priester in the eye. And Green will throw it on first down. Gets it out on the side to Joe Woods. And Woods gets good yardage out to the 43-yard line where Omar Brown knocks him down. Here's a look at our Carolina Jeep Eagles starting lineups. First of all, for the Clemson offense, we told you about the backfield set. Wyatt and Horn will be the starting wideouts. Lamont Hall, the blocking tight end. Good offensive line. Trevor Putnam's had a good year, and Will Young was the offensive lineman of the week in the conference against Georgia Tech. Good ones. Second down, let's call it about three. Green again, the quick toss to Antoine White, and Clemson has a first down. James Hamilton on the stop for North Carolina. Surprising but effective start for Clemson against a very good North Carolina defense, allowing less than 230 yards a game. Marcus Jones, the All-American, heads the front line. Kabusa Mamez, the number two tackler in the conference, heads up the linebacking core. Fuzzy Lee, Omar Brown have had great seasons for the Carolina secondary. First and 10 Tigers out near midfield. Fake the Priester. Green going for it all downfield. Tony Horn is double covered. Tommy West surprising everybody with three passes, Doc Walker, in yeah. the first three plays. Well, he surprised me as well. And you know, you're trying to break keys and you're trying to catch North Carolina coming off this bye, maybe a little tense. And again, you look at the lack of uh, victories here for Clemson at Death Valley, and I think they're just trying to get the emotions going in their way. Russell Davis getting to Neilan Green just as he released the ball. Good coverage downfield by the North Carolina secondary against Tony Horn. Green on the option. Priester trying to turn the corner. Omar Brown turned him inside, and Mike Pringley rode him to the turf. But he gets it into North Carolina territory, setting up a third and medium. Now, this is what we expect to see a little more of. You got to give Brown a lot of credit. The way you play the option means so much. Now, watch coming up on your screen. You get the toss. See, that's a good field. Good force that keeps it back inside. Carolina was there in a big way. Mac Brown is eighth year as the head man for the Tar Heels. Looking to come up with a victory here at Death Valley. Green on third down. Downfield. Great. Kenya Crooks comes up with the catch as he got the feet inbounds. Man, look at Clemson going back to last week. Green throwing the strike, frozen rope, extension, catch, feet in. Boy, good operation. Think he didn't like this? Well, confidence is so important for a quarterback, and number 15 has got a boatload of that right now. Priester, deep handoff. But not much territory to go. Marcus Jones, the All-American defensive tackle, shut it down for North Carolina. 
Boy, Rick Terry, there's Tommy thinking, well, we took a shot at a deep one, but that was a great play. But my sophomore quarterback can just maintain some poise. Boy, Rick Terry for Carolina has good penetration on that play. Starting off a little razzle dazzle, folks, but it'll, it'll end up being those big guys on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Michael Allen, the freshman, has committed tailback in the one back set behind Elon Green. And on the option, Green will keep it himself, but not much as Brian Simmons coming off the edge defensively is there for North Carolina. Balance. Good way to describe the Tar Heels defensively. Good balance at down line. So you want to hug the fullback, then you want to get up and get outside of Caboose Mamaze. But Simmons comes up and he's been having a real good year for Carolina. Third down and six. North Carolina outstanding in shutting down the opposition on third down. Less than 30% converted this year against North Carolina, but Clemson converted before on third down, trying to do it again. The option to Allen, all kinds of room. Michael Allen, Clemson might have the first down. Omar Brown on the hit, but those early pass plays pay off there when they go back to the option. Yeah, Greg Ellis was a man on the island. He had to make a decision, did none of the above. You got to force or react. He doesn't do it. They get the nice toss outside, and there you see the burst. Michael Allen, the freshman out of Conway, South Carolina, gets the Clemson first down at the 14 of North Carolina, opening drive of the ball game. Priester back in a tailback in front behind Emory Smith. It's Smith who gets the call, and you are going to have to fight for every inch against the interior of the North Carolina defense. Greg Ellis, the first man to hit Emory Smith. And at down, Marcus Jones, we're going to hear Davis' name mentioned a lot. Terry, there you watch, point of attack. This is just man on man, but good penetration again by the heel. So far, Tar Heels have been doing this pretty much every play so far. They've been really getting good penetration. Purvis at the bottom of that pile. Gain of just a yard for Emory Smith. Little movement on the line, says Andre Purvis. I think Glenn Roundtree, the right guard, flinched on the play. Robin Wood, our referee this afternoon, telling us indeed it was a legal procedure. Well, our penalties in the red area, or the goal zone, as I like to refer to it. You just flinch a bit. Good reaction. Defensive guys love to take a free shot. Clemson averages about six and a half penalties a ball game for 58 yards a game. And off the Priester, he gets a couple. The hole looked larger, but good quick movement by Mays and Hamilton. Two thirds of that linebacking core create a third and long situation for Clemson just outside the North Carolina 10 yard line. I've been a great period for Clemson 41 percent on that. You know you talked about uh, your discussion with Mac Brown about the the bye week and how they really had physical practices. You can sense right now that Carolina has really stepped it up from an intensity standpoint. Clemson has been outscored all season in the first quarter but they have the early advantage here they hope as they go to the end zone way over the head of Tony Horn as Sean Boyd had the coverage and the Tigers will have to settle for a field goal try from Jeff Sauve. Oh, we noticed Clemson really get out of out of character a bit you know had some big plays but didn't get really down to their their bread and butter smash mouth football. Well, the, the one smash mouth carry of Emory Smith on first down, Doc, put him in second and long, and then the penalty really changed them. Yeah, well, we saw last week against Tech, they had a few bad plays, but they stayed with him. So his field goal try is no good as he missed it to the right. All that good work, but nothing to show for it. 9.47 to play in the first period, no score. Atlantic Coast Conference football, the ACC, Exxon, Jefferson Pilot Sports Game of the Week. The Clemson Tigers and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Clemson ran off more than five minutes of time and got it down close, but came away empty. North Carolina gets its first opportunity.
Thomas gives it to Leon Johnson. He bounces off Carlos Curry and runs it out for eight yards. Peter Ford ran him out of bounds, but Leon Johnson, the 210-pound junior, won the battle with Carlos Curry. And what a play to have on the first play from scrimmage. Bam! I mean, you go face mask to face mask, and the back wins. Curry had towed the 285 pounds, and it wasn't enough to stop Johnson. Leon Johnson has been like fine wine this year for North Carolina. A little more aging each week, and he gets tastier and tastier. That's L.C. Stevens, the man in motion. Johnson again. Good block by his fullback, and he'll pick up the first down. Also had a good block from left tackle Russell Babb on the play. Let's set that North Carolina offense behind quarterback Mike Thomas. Chris Watson will be the fullback. Marcus Wall, Octavius Barnes, and Freddie Jones, the starting trio of receivers. An offensive line headed up by a youngster, really, the sophomore Jeff Saturday at center, has had a great year, as well as the junior left tackle, Byron Thomas. First and 10, North Carolina at their own 32-yard line. Watson, the fullback for just a little lost the ball but they say it popped loose when he hit the ground defensively for Clemson Carlos Curry will be the man in the middle he was the guy who made initial contact Lamar Simpson coming off an injury is at one end with Raymond White Patrick Sapp Anthony Simmons Andy McCrory new linebacking core along with Brett Williams that has played well secondary headed up by two of my favorite hitters Brian Dawkins and Liam on Evans <laughs> sludge and sludge happen. Again, the reverse motion. Thomas on the option, got it off to Leon Johnson. Johnson out close to a first down. Brett Williams hit Mike Thomas, but he got the pitch away, and Leon nearly got first down yardage. Well, when you work against the option in practice, uh, I mean, it really helps you a lot. This is great recognition, great hustle, and super execution on Tar Heels. I mean, you know, that's just, that's difficult to do. One thing to do it on air, but that's live, and they made it happen. They set Patrick Sapp into no man's land and ran around him as Johnson picks up his second first down run of the ball game. Now you got a physical guy to run up against. Put him on that island. Not bad. 4.4 average. Nine scores. And that number has been going up in recent weeks. Johnson again picks his way through traffic out over the 45 yard line where Anthony Simmons made the hit. Anthony Simmons the defensive lineman of the week for the Atlantic Coast Conference it was the fourth time in eight weeks that Anthony Simmons has been honored by the conference now, outstanding freshman now you see Raymond White he's number 97 Mississippi been doing a stellar job as well second and long for the Tar Heels deep hand off to Johnson has Bab out in front of him Bab with a huge block on Andy McCrory and Leon Johnson rambles into Clemson territory down near the 40 yard line boy Brian Honeycutt got it started that offensive line you mentioned Saturday Honeycutt there you see those two big guys on the pull reminds me of the kind of trade play put Sapp in a bad position Johnson was patient key he was patient he let it happen and worked his way up field now you're on the defensive side and you're thinking what do I do this before it is that big guard and bam you're on your back 36 yards on the drive already for Leon Johnson who gets a breather Mike Jeter into the ball game at tailback Thomas tosses it to Jeter Jeter tries to turn the corner he fights his way forward with good second effort as he bent over Andy McCrory and Patrick Sapp got about three or four on the play and McCrory is still down by the pride of Yorktown High School out of Virginia this guy's he has acceleration he has great balance and the more he plays I mean folks out Chapel Hill are going to learn to love this young man Andy McCrory former defensive back that linebacking core very interesting this year for the Clemson Tigers Brett Williams at the rush linebacker used to be a defensive end Andy McCrory used to be a defensive back Patrick Sapp used to be a quarterback and Anthony Simmons used to be a high schooler. Yet they have mel melded together into a pretty good linebacking unit. When you talk about the 
Clemson linebackers of course there's a big history that you have to live up to down here some great linebackers let's see if we can see what happened to Andy McCrory well that's just full contact the neck gets bowed back just a bit then on the ankle that could be depends on if it's a lower extremity looks like an ankle but that's a lot of neck go back he might have just been dinged working on that happened. left ankle uh -huh. but it, I think he took a, a Riddick bow shot to the chin as well from the shoulder pad of Mike Jeter. Yeah, he got a double shot. Head and ankle. Then he body got a little laxed. You know, a lot of times you were knocked out for a few moments. I mean, you just flat out. You mentioned those linebackers, and uh, usually you think about Penn State and you think about linebackers, but Clemson didn't have to take a backseat. Carolina. Not to anybody. We all know the, the great Lawrence Taylor. And of course, North Carolina has long had the proud tradition of being tailback you in the Atlantic Coast Conference and you can see in the Mac Brown era when they can get more than 200 yards rushing they are an outstanding football team McCrary favoring that left ankle as he comes to the sidelines he'll be replaced by another true freshman number 57 Chris Jones <laughs> Jones played pretty well yeah. last week against Georgia Tech well you figure he's fifth on the team in tackles you know, backing up, so that tells you a lot about the freshman. The freshman, you look at Poindexter out of Virginia. This been some outstanding freshmen in the ACC. A lot of good players. Midway through this first quarter, no score. Each team has been able to move the ball, but no points up yet on the board. The Johnson is back in the game, and Leon will get to within a couple of yards of first down territory again. It appeared that the ball popped loose, but it was after the play. Tony Planton was the man who planted Johnson to the turf. Boy, when he looks back at this one, he just had a, he hugs the block of Linton. I mean, Linton is there with it. Baxter pulls around. They got a real nice seal. He doesn't hug it well enough. Gets out no man's land. Gets out in space. Boy, you hug that double team, man, and he'd still be running. Carolina about 40% on third down this year as Stevens again goes in motion. They'll toss it to Johnson, trying to get to the corner. Anthony Simmons got him, and it is going to be close. There is simply no substitute for speed, and especially on the defensive side. It allows you to be out of position. Johnson looks like he's favoring maybe an ankle or knee. Looks like Mitch taking a shot on the leg. You watch this young freshman, Anthony Simmons. He's going to come into your screen. There you see all blue and white. There he goes. He's chasing. He's in a bad fundamental position, but he makes up for it with speed. Jonathan Linton coming into the ball game. Mac Brown's going to go for it if they don't get the first down, and they are going to be shy of it by about three quarters the length of the football. Keep in mind, Scott Caparelli, their field goal kicker, does not have great range as long on the season is 37 yards he would be attempting a 49 yarder here even with the wind to his back Carolina will go for it on fourth down as Watson Linton and McGregor all come into the lineup it'll be the jumbo backfield Mike Thomas has yet to throw the football here in this first drive for North Carolina to Jeff Saturday in a fine year he's had. You got a 270 pound center and a 240 pound quarterback. You can do a lot of things on short yardage. That's Watson in motion. They give it to Linton and the big guy has the first down. The sophomore out of Catasauqua, Pennsylvania stacked up by Mon Wilson but not before Linton got to the 30. And another North Carolina first down. They are now 9 of 16 this year when they have gone for it on fourth down. It has all been on the ground as they have worked their way down to the 545 mark of the first quarter. Each team has had the ball but one time. Statement football, man. You, you put it in their players' minds. They're just tougher. And they go out and prove it. Fullback Chris Watson. Not much at all. Lamarick Simpson, broken thumb and all, was right there to stop Watson for virtually no game. Yeah, Mons Wilson, big time play on that. If you, if you look at Clemson, they kind of like this. I mean, they just smash my football as their version. 
They practice that way. Tommy West, uh, still one of the coaches that I know, has the old board, lays the wood out, has the guys under the chicken coop, and you come out and you slug it out. So I, this is going to be good. Barnes comes to the right of Thomas with Wall and Stevens to his left. He has yet to throw the football, and it's still the Brown game. Johnson on the toss sweep. Again, that overall team speed of Clemson makes it a short yardage play, and there is a flag down as well. Ryan Dawkins and Patrick Sapp were there. Sapp was there, but Marcus Wall on him. You get a wide receiver going on a stud like Sapp. I mean, that says a lot about Marcus and his courage. As a co-captain, I mean, you have to demonstrate that. That's a good block. Robin Wood will tell us what the flag was about. Offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Second penalty of the ball game against Clemson. They have been costly ones. Instead of third and long, it'll be second and medium. Their first penalty took them back when they were down in the red zone where they eventually missed a field goal. Well, I love the, you know, the first eight minutes of a football game. You start to try to put that philosophy down and and really try to establish tempo in this game so far. All smash mouth football for the Tar Heels. And Warren Forney jumps off sides. And that should give North Carolina a first down. Dead ball, offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. We saw the bye week help Virginia against Florida State Thursday night set a defense to try and slow down the Gulf Coast offense. It looks like in the bye week for North Carolina, Mac Brown wanted to reinvigorate his ground game and here on this opening drive, as they said in the Frankenstein movie, it's alive, it's alive. <laughs> Leon Johnson runs into Anthony Simmons and speaking of live bodies, the freshman drops Johnson for a loss. It's hard to imagine that anybody can be this good this early in their football career. I mean, going up against big physical offense like Carolina, he reads so well. Now, granted, he's got some big guys up front. What a double team. Nice double team. I mean, he gives him an eye opener there. Great power off the ball. Here, Forney, he's fighting his guts out two on one, holds it up. Get it back like that, Dylan. That is quite impressive. Talk about Anthony Simmons a little more in a moment on second and long Thomas. Draw play Johnson. And it's hit in the backfield by Brett Williams, and he'll lose more ground. They ran a draw play, but there were just too many orange shirted jerseys in front of Leon Johnson. Hey, Tiger showing they're ready to slug it out. Good recognition. That's just reckless abandon. You got guys coming in and leaving their feet, flying over piles. Brett Williams really impressed me last week against Georgia Tech. This young man has loaded with talent. That was He's an all out guy. blitz, Doc. They had Brett Williams and Brian Dawkins coming. Bringing it. Third and call it 15. First pass of the day for Thomas. And L.C. Stevens is hammered by Mon Wilson. No game. And Stevens is still down. So you get the wind knocked right out of you. See, this play took a long time to develop. See, they recognize that. 40, good recognition. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. Welcome back to Clemson, along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood. I'm Jack Corrigan. North Carolina has sent Scott Caparelli, their senior place kicker, out to attempt what would be a 42-yard field goal. You see his long on the year is 37. He does have the wind to his back. Oscar Davenport on the hold, and it's a fake. Davenport is sacked by Patrick Sapp. Wow. Both teams Believe drive it. down the field and come up empty. We'll be back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. Boy, it is hard to imagine that you can fake anybody out with a trick play when you bring in a guy like Davenport to be your holder and you have him coming out of a timeout. Well, it didn't work. The staff comes up and makes a big-time stop 
kills the momentum of a Tar Heel drive that up to that point had been quite impressive. 26 plays between the two teams and more than 100 yards in the first quarter, but no points. Neilan Green to Antoine Wyatt. Wyatt slips a tackle and another. Antoine Wyatt out close to midfield. Cavusa Vamez finally brings him down. What is going on with Clemson's offense? Boy, they're throwing the football. Well, you know, you talked about this young man in our open, Jack, and how he would have to be a big part of this ball game. He just sits now. What a relief it is to know he's going to get the football. Brown comes up. He's going to be the saving grace on this deal after Mays kind of slows him down. Are you watching? See ya. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, wait, stop. I mean, that is hard to do. That is hard to do. Quick toss to Raymond Priester. Priester out close to another Clemson first down as he takes it into North Carolina territory. Sean Boyd on the stop. Raymond Priester with his first large run of the afternoon. They'll say he went out of bounds at about the 41 yard line of North Carolina. It's another first down. You know, people have had a hard time coming to Death Valley and winning. But when you're the home team, you have a tough time winning at home. It is very difficult to overcome that uh, psychologically. Again, the toss to Priest. A good block by Emory Smith on Brian Simmons. It's out about seven or eight yards on the play. Second and short for Clemson. We'll go to our big guy on the field, Mike Hogwood. I'll tell you, stop at Oscar Davenport's really fired him up on offense, as you can tell. Give the Clemson coaches credit. They saw Davenport in the game, not Greg Williams, a regular holder. They all hollered fake, 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 fake. Clemson wasn't fooled at all on that fake field goal attempt. Patrick Sapp with the sack on that. Patrick told me yesterday that's like throwing a touchdown pass. So another TD toss for the ex-quarterback. And there's a toss to Antoine Wyatt trying to get him the ball in open space. And a good open field tackle by Omar Brown. Short yardage, and I think he is still shy of the first down. First Union presents around the ACC this first weekend of November. Georgia Tech is at Winston-Salem to tag on Rusty LaRue and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. While at Raleigh at Carter Finley, it'll be Terry Harvey in the North Carolina State Wolfpack battling the Maryland Terrapins with Jermaine Lewis and company. Neilan Green, five of seven here in the opening quarter. Third and short, they give it to Emory Smith. He got stacked up. And we'll have to wait and see where they spot the football. That is going to be very close. Marcus Jones who has played better and better as he has gotten over that preseason knee injury was the guy that made the first hit on Emory Smith. Well, you can understand that they made it really a big part of their business to stop Smith. I thought that would be one of the keys in the game. And, and so far, I mean, when you look at the tackle play, Terry and Jones and Mays, they, they've been Johnny on the spot. North Carolina almost totally on the ground on their first drive. Clemson has thrown the ball more than everybody thought. And Robin Wood showed you just how far Clemson will have to go to keep this drive alive. Robert Jackson comes into the ball game. Mark Landry comes into the ball game. Lamont Hall returns. Numbers this year on Marcus Jones, the All-American, 6'6", 290-pounder out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Smith, boy, it's good. He only needed a little, and he only got a little if he got that. This will be very close. This is all on the spot. Marcus Dow, all you could see was big number 78. He engulfed him. Man, that down line, that's, that's for four. Tar Heels. They have not given up much. Pringle coming in. He's getting a hat in there. Down to the bottom of that pile. You know Jones is, is there. Mike Pringley, the number 91, the redshirt freshman from Linden, New Jersey, really came over the top well. And was it left foot or right foot? That'll tell you whether or not that spot got you the first down. And North Carolina has held. A great defensive stand by that front wall of the Tar Heels in the closing seconds of the first period. 
And this is really just, just, just a shot in the gut for both sides, especially Tommy West. I mean, they pride themselves on being able to root people out. You miss blocks at the point of attack, as we saw right in front of your screen. See, Landry gets beat. If you cannot give up inside penetration on short yardage, that was a great move by Mike Pringle. Tar Heels get it back just over their own 30-yard line. Mike Thomas will throw on the bootleg. And finds his man, Marcus Wall. Marcus Wall, the speedster, down inside the Clemson 40. Liam on Evans on the stop. It was all on the ground in their first possession. The bootleg goes for 30 here on their first play of drive number two. Good decision with the football. If he chooses the inside receiver, is picked. He goes outside, and there you see you can't have guys running in space. McLean didn't have a shot at the football, and then you talk about the speed and acceleration. Marcus Wall. Well, we have to correct ourselves. It wasn't Marcus Wall. It was Darren Ashford who made the catch and got the Tar Heels into Clemson territory. A quarter of football in the book. Lots of action, but no score. No score after 15 minutes of football here at Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, the Tar Heels and the Tigers. But as we look at our Lee Apparel first quarter stats, it wasn't like the game wasn't busy. There were a lot of things going on, but both teams' defenses rose to the occasion when necessary. A lot of contact, too, boys. This is good. Love it. Mike Thomas, deep handoff to Leon Johnson, trying to turn the corner. Look at all the orange jerseys. And Johnson is going to lose yardage. Lamar Simpson broke his thumb and bruised his knee against Georgia Tech. Was doubtful most of the week, but has looked pretty good so far today. I hate to see him healthy. <laughs> if he's hurt now, with that kind of lateral quickness. Loss of about three on the play for Leon Johnson. Ashford and Barnes come to the left of quarterback Mike Thomas. And he'll put it up. Ford with the interception. Mike Thomas trying to run the curl route to Ashford, and Peter Ford picks off his second interception of the season. I started to think to myself, when are they going to get uh, Barnes in the ball game? He watched the pass pro on this more than adequate. Going to your left, trying to set the shoulders up, see you late. Barnes has got to bring himself all the way back to this football. But when you go roll left and you try to set those shoulders up, he broke on the football, and the receiver's got to break that up, or oh, you're in big trouble. Mont Wilson put pressure on Mike Thomas. The turnover gives it to Clemson as they toss it to Raymond Priester. He slips through traffic and takes it out over the 35-yard line. James Hamilton on the hit, but not before Raymond Priester picked up about eight. That's a defensive war. It really is. You can get stopped on a fourth and one. You come back and get an interception. In the meantime, a couple of big plays here and there, but these two teams, and you mentioned the Virginia win over FSU, and now you start to think there's hope. You can control your own destiny, but you've got to get it done on the field. Second down and two for the Titans. again on the toss. Good block in front of him by Emory Smith. And he should have the first down out near the 38-yard line. Both these teams have very good lateral pursuit. And when you try and run the perimeter, Doc, you better make up your mind and not hesitate. Oh, you can't. They also had a slant on. They had a slant running that side to that side of the field. And when you can pick up a slant and still get positive yardage, uh, it says a lot. Big Robert Jackson, they're all 325 pounds of that young man at H.D. Woodson in Washington, D.C. He's, uh, he's really had a good year. He's come on strong and I think has a nice future. Close enough to measure again. And it's a first down for the Tigers. <laughs> Fifth first down of the afternoon for Tommy West team, and they have had pretty good balance so far. Take their tight end out of the game and work three wide receivers. And toss it to Priester. Raymond Priester out to about the 44-yard line. Gain of about 
six on the play. Let's go to the sidelines again. Mike Hogwood. Some good news on the Clemson bench, and that's Andre McCory, who turned his ankle. Hasn't been back in since, but he's been running up and down the sidelines. He feels okay. Next time they're back on D, number five will be in the game. Michael Allen checks into the ball game at tailback. Emory Smith is also out of the lineup. They'll go to that one back set again with four wide receivers. Second, let's call it more like five. Green gives it to Allen, and he is cut down quickly by Cavusa Bamez. <laughs> Man, we are really lucky to see the great linebacker play on both sides. Running the football, playing your reads, good inside-out angle. Comes right across the ball, comes right across real life. You like to see him lock up a little better, but he gets good initial contact. And see, you watch the rest of the white shirts right there. Simmons in great position, not giving any ground. I'll tell you what, Russell Davis denied Robert Jackson a chance to even block on Mays. That was a big factor. They come right back to the same play. For first down yardage for Raymond Priester. Mays ran him out of bounds. Not a strong arm football. When you get 300 pounders that don't get movement on there. You know, there's some weight room, some strength there. Hey, you watch this. Glad Pringley. He's just, as a freshman, it's just hard to imagine. 235 pounds going up against Robert Jackson, who's three and a quarter. That means you spend a lot of time. Hitting the weights. You can see in the eyes in that replay of Raymond Priester. He spotted that first down marker and just made his run right there. Green on the roll. Finds Wyatt. Close to another first down. It'd be about a half yard shy. Ryan Simmons chases him out of bounds. Antoine Wyatt came in 11th in the conference with 31 receptions. He has been an active man already in this one. Four catches. The thing about Green, you know, once he gets in a groove, he is rough. Now watch the footwork on this. This is a little special. He tried to get it in. I think he does. Think about Green in 1994, only one interception in 94 attempts. So once he gets the rhythm and gets the confidence going, uh, he, he can be unstoppable. He's got but five interceptions this year as they give it to Emory Smith. He'll get first down yardage, but not much more. As again, K Mays is there on the stop, the sophomore from Anniston, Alabama. But he got a lot worse from that collision. Yeah, he got a little hip. Hit on that hip. Mays, Bulldog. Second in the conference and averages in tackle average per game. 85 tackles in the first seven ball games for North Carolina. Another Clemson first down. There's seventh of the ball game. But we are still scoreless early in the second quarter. Priester cut off by Holiday was able to fight forward where Mays is there again. Vonnie Holiday had great penetration. Good athletes, about 265 pounds for Vani. And again, you start to watch it. The penetration really on both sides when they're on has, has been the difference in this ball game. You're trying to extend the option out, and it's tough. Look at the pursuit. There's Marcus Jones, who throw Marcus Jones' stats out of the window. Well, it's what he does on the field that allows the rest of these guys, like Ellis, Terry, and, and Davis, to be, to be effective. But you've always got to have at least two people watching Marcus Jones. Looks like they've had their best success, as those numbers show you, running to their right. Second and long, they go left again with Priester. This time got a good block from Jim Bundren and got it inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Guess who? K Mays there again for North Carolina. <laughs> if you don't know where we are in this ball game, you look at Kavusa Mays, you think, is this the fourth quarter? I mean, that's how much slugging has gone on. As we mentioned, 85 tackles, one sack. I mean, these guys have been in a toe to toe, right cross to left cross kind of operation. And one can only imagine what this is going to look like in the fourth quarter. I think you can take the top five teams in the ACC right now and say every one of them can play very physical. Short yardage, green on the option, keeps it himself, first down, Clemson. Nilon Green, who averages about three yards a carry, got about four on that play and keeps the drive alive. Now this is when he becomes a premium quarterback. He's been throwing well. There you see Emory Smith at the point of attack. Great block on the edge by Emory on Hamilton. But it's that footwork and that knowledge and just that feel that Elon has. 
you get a big fullback that can block and run like Emory Smith, you can do a lot on offense. First and ten inside the 30. They've been down there once before and they're going to lose yardage. Marcus Jones says, How do you stop the option? You don't even let them get an option. That's an all American play. That is an all American play. Now you can see why this young man was preseason defensive player of the year. See, you take a good football player in Glenn Roundtree, you engulf him, and you go get a quarterback, and you stop it all. You take control of the play in a near fumble. That, folks, is an all American performance. They wanted to chop Marcus Jones, and he just stepped right over the attempt by Roundtree. Second and 12. Green play action. Going for it all. Has a man open. Joe Woods. Touchdown. Joe Woods, the transfer from Mississippi, scores his first Clemson touchdown. The Tigers get the first points of the day. Well, you know what they can do by ground, and that play action sets it up. Good block by Priester. And there's a give, the basket, Willie Mays style catch, and a score, but it's all set up by the run. Longest play of the year for Joe Woods. Jeff Save's conversion is good. 9.29 to play here in the first half. The hometown team has the early lead. Another look at the first score of the ball game. Nelon Green to Joe Woods. What a nice loft on that. Can you imagine? I mean, Green has the confidence now to put a little air on that football. And he just kind of knows it's going to happen. I, I credit that offensive line for being able to establish the ground attack. But this young man now is just overflowing with confidence. Milan seven for nine in this game, 92 yards in his ninth touchdown of the year. How about in his last two games, 17 of his last 22, 265 yards, no interceptions, and three touchdowns. You don't win a lot of football games with those numbers. Marcus Wall, the kickoff return specialist, nearly cracked another one as he gets it over the 30-yard line to about the 32. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top 10 fan poll, where you, the fan, votes for who's number one. Florida State is there right now, but we could see some changes. Ohio State has jumped up to number two. If you want to vote, you can stop by your local Burger King restaurant to find out how you can cast your vote for the number one team in college football. North Carolina trying to rebound after the turnover with a scoring drive by Clemson following the Thomas interception. And they give it to Leon Johnson, and he runs into a stack of bodies headed up by Chris Jones, the freshman from Monroe, Georgia. Well, you talk about some collisions. I mean, both sides, fullback, Linton this time. I mean, he, he comes in there with, with authority. I mean, I, you can just get a sense of these teams now playing with a, a renewed purpose. What really impresses me about Chris Jones and even more so Anthony Simmons, not only are they great linebackers with big pop ability, they're not very heavy. Pop ability, I like that. Pop ability. Well, you can, it's all yours. Mike Thomas Thank you. going downfield. Picked off. Andy Ford. One twin and then the other have picked off Mike Thomas. Clemson gets another turnover, and they'll have it out near their own 40-yard line. Take it home. Game balls to Mama. Now, this is what Carolina. Oops, we got a flag on this. Now there's a flag on the play. Good fake by Thomas. And this is what has put them really in a trick bag, if you will. It's just putting a ball up that is ill-advised, throwing into coverage, not taking what's open. Robin Wood discussing the situation with his crew of officials here this afternoon. Dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defensive team after the interception. First down. Somebody obviously in a strong disagreement about the Bosnian peace talks in Dayton, Ohio this weekend, and it cost Clemson 15 yards. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Cockwood. Uh, well, what happened was Octavius Barnes was hollering that he was interfered with, and he was screaming to the officials, 
And uh, to say what I can say on television, the uh, Clemson uh, defensive backs told him to be quiet and go over to the sidelines, and the flag flew, although it wasn't that nice. Well, it usually happens, Mike, that it's the second guy who gets it. Two turnovers against North Carolina, and turnovers have plagued this team all year long. Lamont Pagese comes into the ball game at tailback. He was one of the stars for Clemson in the win a year ago at Chapel Hill. Pagese trying to turn the corner. Doesn't have much success because of Greg Ellis. And now it's the Clemson sidelines turn to be upset about what they thought was a little extracurricular. Well, Carolina, when you're on the road, I mean, the one thing you have to continue, continually have and possess is an inner toughness. I mean, it's just like you, and that's it. The rest of those guys in your color uniform, you got to look at this turnover margin. We, we knew coming in that it would be the problem for Carolina, but you thought with the bye week that maybe they'd been able to work out some of the kinks, and Clemson comes in with a plus two. Emory Smith gets the fake. They get it to Pagese again, and boy, if possible, the contact is even more severe than it was earlier in the game. Mays with a heavy duty hit on Pegues. It'll be third and long. And it's gonna get even better than that. 8-16 to play here in the second quarter. Clemson leading it seven to nothing. Go ahead. On a touchdown pass from Lamont Pegues. We've got a timeout on the field with 8-16 to play. We'll be back with more right after this. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Tony Horn was the injured Clemson Tiger on the play. We're ready to go again on third and six for the Tigers as Green operates from the shotgun. Fires to Antoine Wyatt and it's picked off. off. Brian Simmons with the athletic effort to wrest the ball away from Antoine Wyatt, a flag on the play, so hang on a second. The penalty against Clemson is declined. Brian Simmons with his first interception comes up big for the Tar Heels. You see, I see more and more of this now. Where defensive players, these good athletes who played a lot of high school ball, played some offense, just a little more perceptive after going after the football. That man out of Newburn, North Carolina, makes it happen. I was surprised that Wyatt even caught that ball around his ankles. Simmons then makes an even better play to take it away from him. That's Asford in motion as Thomas tosses it to Leon Johnson. Big hole. Johnson down near the 20-yard line. Anthony Simmons tripped him up. Otherwise, Johnson might have gone the distance. And that play had what we like to term as a lot of potential. Like Freddie Jones out on the edge, maintains good position. See if he doesn't slip there, good effort. Simmons gets the back of that heel. If not, the band might have been playing for Carolina. Three turnovers, two for North Carolina, one for Clemson. The Tar Heels trying to take advantage of the first Clemson miscue. sorts of bodies moving who did it first if Clemson made contact then the penalty will go against the Tar Heels or against the Tigers and the Tar Heels clap that that's what happened dead ball defense offsides five yards beat the down Offside against the Tigers. Tommy West slightly emotional on the sidelines Penalty already First against the, the Tigers for 35 yards. Line. Mike Thomas, a slow start throwing the ball. So they keep it on the ground. Linton, the fullback, started the year as a tailback and will play some there, but in their efforts to get more offense out of the fullback spot, they moved the sophomore and he got good yardage there. A lot of talent on both backfields. Mike Hopgood, 61, guard for Carolina. Real nice effort on this play. Big guy stay keeping the feet moving. See, you watch that. Those blue and white shirts, man, they're moving the orange shirts out of the way. That was a good play up front by the Tar Heel offensive Ball, line. Short of the Midway through the second quarter, North Carolina with their best scoring opportunity yet. Leon Johnson will lose yardage. Mon will 
Wilson with great penetration, the sophomore from Tupelo, Mississippi. Don't you love it? You know, the guys in the white shirt get a good play up front, and the guys in the orange shirt come right back, and they counter it. That's how evenly matched these two teams are. Great effort on each play, good intensity. See, there you watch that. Good fundamental stance. Boy, Mons Wilson, Coach Howe, that's the way you coach your kids, wouldn't you? Drop those hips and bend those knees and strike and square up. North Carolina very proficient down in the red zone. Thomas, play fake, trying to find some place to go, but Wilson ran him out of bounds. Very close to a late hit at the end of the play. Anthony Simmons also in pursuit. And Carlos Curry is the injured Tiger. Man, has he played hard this year. Keep in mind that they are thin on that defensive front. As we look at Curry being attended to on the sidelines, we can see Warren Forney, another defensive lineman, already heading to the locker room for the Tigers. So Bernard Randolph, he's out, broke his arm, broke his leg, rather, a couple of weeks ago. So they are hurting a bit. Well, you know there has been a lot of contact in this game when we have seen a number of guys in the same situation as Carlos Curry. Bodies flying everywhere with lots of contact usually results in this kind of scene. Yeah. Easily the most physical game that uh, I've seen so far. Now we have played a, a lot of football yet, but up to this point, this has really been face mask to face mask football. This is a crucial game for Tommy West team. Keep in mind they need to win six ball games to be eligible, six 1A ball games to be eligible for a ball game. Right now they have five wins, but only four 1A wins. So they've got to win at least two of their final three ball games. Down to the sidelines again, and our Mike Hogwood. You were talking about Warren Forney a moment ago going to the locker room. He injured his elbow on that uh, encroachment penalty. And uh, they're going to x-ray it. They think it might be broken or cracked, but uh, that's, that'd be a big blow for the Tigers. Third down and 11. They're 0 for 2 on third down, North Carolina. Thomas to throw. Flag down into the end zone. It is caught by Chris Watson out of the backfield. Let's check the penalty marker. And it's coming back. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty and repeat third down. First penalty of the afternoon against North Carolina and it is huge. Man, man, man. And especially to have a successful throw and catch by Thomas would have been really a confidence booster for him. But you know formations are that's, it's critical. Sometimes it's just a matter of the guy being up on the line or not. Or you back Brown now is reading a little bit of his mind off to the guys the stripes. The illegal shift penalty pushes it back to the 16 yard line where it's third down. And now North Carolina is going to take a timeout. Six oh seven to go. Huge play here for the Tar Heels trailing by a touchdown. Seven nothing Clemson leading but North Carolina has it at the Tigers 16 yard line third and 16. Clemson with their dime package six defensive backs in the ball game. Mike Thomas with time incomplete as he tried to get it to his tight end. Freddie Jones couldn't short hop the ball and the Tar Heels will have to try for a field goal. Missed opportunities. You don't get a lot in the red area. You got to cash in. Go back to an illegal shift. Scott Caparelli. He'll be trying a 33 yard field goal. 8 of 11 from inside of 35, but it's blocked. Dexter McLean 
with the block. The Tigers block kicks better than anybody in the country. And they do it again. Certain teams pull this off more so than not. A lot of it has to go to the, the, just the emphasis that you put on it as a staff. Oh, boy, that was a clean one. I mean, he might have been taking that one off the ball and ran with it. That was a clean block. New Clemson record. That was the seventh blocked kick of the 95 campaign for the Tigers. Tommy West team able to thwart the drive of the North Carolina Tar Heels following the Simmons interception. Couple of ticks under six minutes to play here in the first half. Lamont Pegues, big hole up the middle, out close to first down numbers. Hamilton and Boyd on the stop for the Tar Heels. I think momentum is obviously doing some shifting now. That's just good wall up front. Pushing people down the line, if you will, for Clemson. Those big tackles. Again, Morgan's been playing well. Jackson playing well. Lance, they rotate the big guys. Bundren, and it keeps them fresh. And right now, they're pushing the weight around a little bit. Ten-yard gain for Pegues, the sophomore out of Thomasville, South Carolina. And Lamont gets the ball again. This time, short yardage, because Cabusa Bamez Knocked him off his pins, and he's James limping. Hamilton finished it off. Jack, I don't know if he's going to be able to stay on the field. Mays is really limping. Clemson has had big second quarters throughout the year. You can see they have started slow and then gotten better. We mentioned they are one and three here at home, but the three losses are to Florida State, Virginia, and Georgia, and really only the Georgia game was one they really felt they should have won. Mm -hmm. Well, Virginia really had to overcome some odds. Uh, and really how they had been had a tough time winning in Death Valley. They pulled it off. A little quick pass to Antoine Wyatt. Wyatt with a move. Wyatt into North Carolina territory at the 46-yard line. Brian Simmons ran him down. Neilon Green and Antoine Wyatt are on the same wavelength. <laughs> They're getting it done. Poor Omar Brown. He got to be asking himself, I've been so close, but yet so far away from making plays. See, here he gets juked on that one. Downfield, though, the pressure that Woods applies. See, that when you get your buddies to help you out, downfield chipping away, you can do good things. 22-yard gain. Priester now playing at fullback in front of Pegues. Pegues lost the football, but fell right back on it. At the 37-yard line of North Carolina, Jamie Carrick, who is in the ball game at middle linebacker, put the big hit on. Yeah, talk about collisions. We've had four or five flush hits. A good. There's our guy in there, Marcus Jones, great and happy. See that? I mean, that's just straight contact. He's lucky that ball bounced right back to him because he, for my money, he's completely knocked out for a split second. James Hamilton was the guy that popped the ball loose, but it fell right back to Pegues. Lamont gets the call again. Good cut and an even better tackle by Sean Boyd, the free safety, right at the 40-yard line. It'll leave him about four yards shy of a first down. Yeah, you talked about the safeties. Of it. That's a sludge hammer hit. Great though linebacker play again by Simmons. He forces him inside. And he's always where he ought to be. 340 to play here in the second quarter. Clemson has all three of its timeouts remaining there. Four of six on third down. Quick toss and not a real good pass this time from Green to Wyatt. <laughs> Down to the sidelines again, Mike Hogwood. Guys, coming up at halftime, we'll be, uh, of course, giving you our Ice House Player of the Week, and we'll be talking with some former Clemson quarterbacks. Mike Epley and Rodney Williams will be joining us. We'll look at our weekly ACC stat rundown, and I have a lot of interesting things for you at halftime, but I think there's still a lot of football to be played here in this first half. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, in a 7-0 ball game late in the second quarter, this will be the first punt of the game. Kevin Laird will try and back up the Tar Heels. He must be the designated pooch kicker, and that's a dandy. Wall calls for it, makes the fair catch at the 10. If he doesn't do that, that ball's down inside the five. You're in trouble. That's smart. That's good football. So North Carolina will be 89 yards away from tying this game up with 321 to play. They have two timeouts remaining. 
Tar Heels had the one touchdown, but it was called back on the illegal shift and eventually missed the field goal. Each team has missed a field goal. North Carolina also attempted a fake on a field goal and came up empty. Thomas gives it to Johnson on the delay. And Chris Jones, the freshman, stops him out near the 15-yard line. It'll be a second and about six. And things don't stay open too long in this, but these two defensive clubs. I was just about to say, what a hole, and all of a sudden it is over and closed. That's what speed will do for you. Chris Jones, uh, and again, an excellent athlete who is fifth in the team in tackles and been playing the spot duty. Thomas on the option. To Johnson, first down, out of bounds, out near the 25-yard line. Antoine Edwards, the free safety, knocked him out of bounds. North Carolina has had 26 offensive plays, 21 of them on the ground. Oh, this is nice. This is picturesque option football. And Brian Honeycutt makes a good decision here. Here you watch the guard, 62, pulling. There you watch Sapsi. He stays at home, gets a hit. You want to get a hit on the quarterback. But good toss, good execution. Johnson again. Great penetration this time by Adrian Dingle. Also Tony DeSue. Two more linebackers for Clemson. Might have lost a yard on the play. Leon Johnson has carried the ball 16 times already in this game for 59 yards. So it has not been an easy effort for no. Leon. I started off the first 10 plays at pounding the football and Leon, uh, but I think it's a back. I'm sure he loves it. Thomas has a screen set up for Johnson with a couple of blockers in front of him. Leon Johnson, he's got room up the sidelines, couldn't stay inbounds. He'll have a North Carolina first down, but had he been able to stay inbounds, he might have gone the distance. Boy, Jersey Gathers comes out 74. He tried to line up. You know, it's tough. Those big. 300 pounders are out in space trying to line up a block. See, you think good inside move, and sometimes you think by design, Thomas that time just got beat. Now, watch this. See, that's pretty good athleticism for a big guy to try to get a nick on it. Just a little push, and that opens it up. A good running by Johnson. 18 yard pickup, 156 to play in the first half. North Carolina down 7 0, but they have moved the ball much of the day. Marcus Wall in motion. as he throws but gets Marcus Wall the pressure from Adrian Dingle forced Thomas to throw that ball low to Marcus Wall because Wall had room to run had he been able to stay on his feet it's twice now Dingle has brought it from that side real good pass rush get a 235 pound freshman here he shows no fear that's good speed rush watch him bend back and get a hit on the quarterback those hits on the quarterback folks eventually pay dividends six yard pass they go back to the ground Leon Johnson and there is not much there. He'll be shy of the first down and now North Carolina will be forced to use the second of its timeouts with 116 to play here in the second quarter. Is this game flying or what? Next week the Tar Heels will be back home at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill to tangle with the Florida State Seminoles and some of you will see that ball game as our Exxon ACC game of the week. Others will see the Virginia Cavaliers fresh off their upset of number two Florida State in College Park against the Maryland Terrapins. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Twelve o'clock kickoff next Saturday. Some big ball games a little more pressure on Mac Brown and the Carolina Club because you got Florida State who will not be in a decent mood. They'll be in a foul mood as they come in looking for victory and that's why it really uh, puts a lot more importance on this ball game and as to why they've, they've really got to load it up and go for it today. Well it, it's a stretch right now Doc. They've got four games remaining the Tar Heels. This game here then Florida State as we've talked about and then they finish up with their two in-state arch rivals. The game against the Duke Blue Devils on the 18th of November and then Thanksgiving weekend battling on the Friday at Carter Finley against the NC State Wolfpack. They really need to win 
three of these ball games to get themselves in line for a postseason bid for sure. And there's nothing worse than to play an opponent that doesn't like you and wants to see you stay home. You know, and miss a bowl game. So Duke will be dangerous. NC State dangerous. And uh, but as a player, man, you'd want that. You want to be able to go out and play some quality football teams. Third down and a long two. But more importantly, 76 seconds to play in the first half. Thomas had his pass deflected over the head of Chris Watson and incomplete. Good penetration by the Clemson defense. The deflection forces North Carolina to punt away the football. And Mike Thomas will be doing the punting duties for the first time this year. Dexter McLeon went deep and now he moves back up. They're not convinced that Mike is going to punt the football. <laughs> I don't blame him. Just tries to pooch it himself. And it will roll down inside the Clemson 15 yard line. First punt of the year for Mike Thomas. And it's not a bad effort of nearly. 40 yards, 37 yards. Let's go back to the field in Mike Hogwood. This game has taken a toll on both sides. First of all, for Clemson, Warren Forney, he has been ruled out of the rest of this football game. For North Carolina, Cavuso Mamez, he has injured his shin. They have put what looks like a baseball catcher's shin guard on it, taped it on there, and they're hoping he'll be able to play. There you see Kay Mays, the sophomore from Alabama, African-American studies major. You know, Jack, you can get your kid to kick you in the shin and it'll <laughs> drop you to your knees. You That's imagine right. Bring I'll tears to your a, eyes, no problem. problem. I'm telling you, man. Wow. Tigers give it to Emory Smith on first down, and he goes nowhere from the penetration of Rick Terry. But the Tigers will be content, I think, to just let this clock run down and go into the locker room with the 7 to nothing advantage. Yeah. You don't want to have a bad play. I... In North Carolina, with only the one timeout, can't do much about clock management. I think it's time now to get on the blackboard, get in there, start putting some things on the marker, and figure out where you are and what you have to do for the stretch run. This could be the final play of the first half. Emory Smith lugs it over the 15 yard line. Ellison Mays there for North Carolina. North Carolina won the toss of the coin and deferred so they'll get the ball to start the second half and that's why Clemson even more felt content to wind down the closing seconds of this first half. The Clemson Tigers trying to maintain their homecoming edge have the lead down to the sidelines. Tommy West is with our Mike Hogwood. I tell you coach this is one defensive battle here. There are two excellent defenses on the field. We knew coming in that they had an outstanding defense uh, and our defense is playing well. And you came out wide open gunning. You still going to keep with that uh, philosophy? Yeah I think we have to. I mean they're big and they're strong and their linebackers can run and we just can't we can't try to just muscle them around. We got to throw it. You're running a lot of other tailbacks in there today besides Priester. Any uh, philosophy to that? Well Raymond's got a little bit of a hamstring pull so uh, I think he's okay to play uh, but we want to play some of those other people and try to get a little speed on the corner. What do you tell them second half? Well, we got to keep doing what we're doing, but we got to put it in the end zone. We get we need another touchdown offensively right now. All right. Good Thanks. luck, coach. That's a word from Tommy West. His Tigers lead the Tar Heels seven nothing. We are at halftime in Death Valley. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By your hometown Carolina Dodge dealer and the new Dodge. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your Carolina Jeep and Eagle dealer. By Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And by your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By your local Mazda dealers. 
by Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By your Carolina Ford dealer, home of five of America's top 10 selling vehicles. And by Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. Seven nothing, Clemson leading North Carolina. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood and Mac Brown. Mac, you got down close several times, just didn't get it in the end zone. The guys still have to feel pretty positive about it. Well, Mike, they feel positive about. It. We knew it would be a physical ball game, and we're moving the ball real well. We've stopped them quite a bit. They're hurting us some with the split inside stuff, the sweep, and the option. Uh, our guys have to quit making mistakes. We have a guy in motion on the touchdown play. Uh, we're trying to early make something happen as coaches, and we should have gone ahead and kicked the field goal, but they blocked a lot of field goals, so we've got to go play and believe we can win the second half. What would you tell the guys in the locker room to do the second half? What do you have to do specifically? The thing I told them, we're in a situation where we'd hurt ourselves on offense. They really hadn't done much to stop us, and, and uh, we can take care of that. We've got to play like North Carolina the second half. We've got to make it a physical game the second half like it has been and go back out there and win the game in the fourth quarter because it's going to be a tight game. These guys look like they still believe. Uh, they're going to believe. All right, Thanks. that's Mac Brown. Mac Brown's team, which has played very well in the second half this year in terms of outscoring its opponents, but so too has Tommy West Clemson Tigers. So both coaches know these final 30 minutes of football over the next hour and a half will go a long way towards determining what will happen the rest of the season for two very fine football programs. Marcus Wall. The deep man in the triangle awaiting the kickoff of Jeff Sauve. Kick angling towards the sidelines where Wall will take it on his own four yard line. Wall with a crease tries to cut it outside out near the 30 yard line. Where Brad Pope makes the stop. In the first half, we had 10 possessions between these two teams, one punt apiece. You can see that it was on their final possession that North Carolina finally had to punt the ball. They faked a field goal on their first possession and had a block field goal. Turnover stopping the other two drives. Bab in front of him pushes it out over the 30 to about the 33. Raymond White, Brian Dawkins on the stop. Leon was 60 yards on 17 carries in the first 30 minutes of football. Picked up about four there, make it almost, let's call it five. Clemson have to decide they're not going to be able to turn these corners on. That's Ashford in motion. Johnson again. Slipped the tackle at the line of scrimmage and picks up a first down. I like that. I think you have to go north south against Clemson. I'm amazed the team to try to turn the corner on them. Uh, it's so quick, so athletic. But when you just take it, there you picked up on a good slant, good block. You got a fullback. Both clubs have fullbacks that will block you. And that time. Watson with a nice block. Eighth rushing first down of the ball game for North Carolina. Most of those on the strong legs of Leon Johnson. Thomas will put it up. In and out of the hands of Freddie Jones, the tight end. Second and ten, North Carolina. Well, Freddie having a tough time picking up catch number 14 of the year. Runs a real good route, gets himself open. Doesn't hold on to the football. The passing game was a problem for North Carolina in the first half, and they have averaged better than 280 yards a game throwing the ball, but just 55 to this point here. Thomas dumps it off to Johnson. Little screen action. Leon catapulted into the air by Leavon Evans. Boy, running, running those screens. I was just about to compliment Mike on his patience. 
Let this thing develop. See, they have this thing set up. Very nice. You see the 1,000, 1,002 count up front with the offensive line. Honeycomb trying to keep position on it. Evans stops it. Carolina has yet to convert on a third down. They are 0 for 4 today. Thomas on the roll, throwing back. Picked off by Brian Dawkins. Dawkins up the sidelines. He may be gone. Touchdown, Clemson. 48-yard return of the interception by Brian Dawkins. I don't care who you are. You can be Drew Bledsoe in the NFL. Throwing across your body is tough. So he never got set. Never got the feet set so he could throw the strike. Good read, good break. And in front of the home crowd, when you win all orange and you were Clemson, I don't think nobody's going to catch you. Third interception of the ball game for Clemson. Third interception of the season for Brian Dawkins, who was the defensive back of the week last week against Georgia Tech. Jeff Sauve's conversion is good, and Clemson now extends its lead to 14 to nothing early in the second half. You know, we talk so much about the quarterback position. Mike Thomas, again, has had the problem with the interceptions. Let's look from a fundamental standpoint. Throwing off the back foot, leaning back, throwing across your body, you are asking for trouble. And trouble is exactly what he picked up. Now, five completions of 11 attempts, 59 yards, and that's the telling stat, Jack, for it, and three interceptions. 15 interceptions on the season, and Ryan Dawkins, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, returning at 48 yards for the touchdown to put Clemson up 14 to nothing. Ryan Dawkins and Patrick Sapp went to Reigns High School in Jacksonville, Florida together. They're never having as much fun playing football as they are this season. I enjoyed Sapp talking to you about this is the most fun he's had playing football. He says a lot. Marcus Wall trying to return the kickoff and he is shut down by Damon Ward, a freshman out of Wilson, North Carolina, inside the 10-yard line. Now, you know he's loving that. Man, special teams, you can't win. You can't be good without him, and it's the commitment. See, he won't get juked. See, that? that's face mask to face mask, going up against one of the premier return guys in the country. And unfortunately for the Tar Heels, because Marcus was able to jump out of that tackle momentarily, they reset his forward motion and it's inside the 10 instead of out at about the 12 or 14. Thomas still in a quarterback as he hands it off to Leon Johnson. Some tough sledding out over the 10 to about the 12 yard line. It's such a dilemma for Mac Brown and his coaching staff. Mike Thomas, when he is right, can throw the ball as well as any quarterback in the conference. But when he struggles, he seems to struggle in a big way. Well, there's a solution to that, and it means you got to bring a guy out in some cases. Let him see it. Oscar Davenport, I found the best solution for a guy struggling is competition. Thomas on the option to the short side of the field. Keeps it himself over the 15, out to about the 17-yard line. Mon Wilson and Chris Jones stop him about a yard shy of the first down. You know, it's not easy to play this game. It's very difficult, especially at the quarterback spot. But as a senior, I mean, now you either are ready to do it or you are not. And there are a number of reasons. Not all interceptions are the quarterback's fault. But you got to be really uh, the judgment in where you throw that ball, how you throw that football. Those are things you can control. Crucial third down situation for the Tar Heels. They have yet to do it today successfully. They give it to the first man, and that will be a first down out to the 20-yard line. Maurice McGregor picking up the first down yardage for Carolina. The other thing about this, Jack, is that Carolina only down 14 zip. That offensive line, and they can take charge of this. This is how you get back in the football game. You just go at people, right? I mean, chin mask, chin mask, and go at them. That was great push by the Tar Heels. 11.20 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson with the interception leading now by 14. Johnson. 
a deep handoff. Bam out in front of him. And Leon gets four tough yards. Patrick Sapp on the stop at the 24 yard line. Man, that's Sapp. <laughs> Here's a guy who gets blocked. You know, you can judge great football players. They get blocked and they still make the play. I mean, Bab and Honeycutt pulled and did that about as well as you can imagine. And then number three, Patrick Sapp, stays off the block and makes a play. We talked about it before the game, Doc. I mean, I don't think enough has been made of what a remarkable story Patrick Sapp is this season. Thomas, with time, finds his. Fullback Maurice McGregor out near the 30 yard line. Patrick Sapp again. I mean, not only to go from offense to defense, but to be a two year, two and a half year starter really at quarterback, be benched from that spot and have enough athletic ability and maybe more importantly, enough fortitude to come out and not only play, but play well. Yes, because he didn't play defense. He didn't have defense in his background. No, he's a pure, pure thoroughbred. I mean, that guy be playing a lot on Sundays. I really believe that. Thomas on the option. Leon Johnson is going to be close. Brian Dawkins on the hit, and Dawkins got the worst of it. He and Johnson are both slow to get up. Yeah, there's a part of the uniform that they just don't have ample protection for. And every once in a while, you get caught. But I like the way he keeps his shoulder square. He'll hit you. He comes up and you never know. You get kicked going down, but those orange shirts, there are a ton of orange shirts there. Ryan Dawkins, who returned the interception 48 yards for a touchdown a few minutes ago, is the guy still down on the sidelines for the Tigers. I remember that position. That's well, awful painful. Leon Johnson got first down yardage out over the 30 yard line. Clock stops with 9.51 to play. Better than 75,000 on hand here at Memorial Stadium, Death Valley, as it is better known. Next week, the Star Heels will be back within the friendly confines of Keenan Stadium as they play host to the Florida State Seminoles. The Seminoles knocked off for the first time in conference play on Thursday night. Some of you may see the team that knocked off Florida State, the Virginia Cavaliers, tangling with the Maryland Terrapins. That's next Saturday, 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for which game you'll be seeing. Somehow, I don't know if I'd want to be the team to face Florida State after they got the first defeat. Plus the fact that now they will get 10 days to prepare for oh, yeah. you because of the time off. They get Brian Dawkins up on his feet. So we'll get play resumed here. Carolina with a first down at its own 30 yard line. This drive started back in their own eight. Desperate to put points on the board and get back into this one. Mike Thomas with time, but then deflected by Adrian Dingle. They are playing three true freshmen in this game. Adrian Dingle, Chris Jones, and Anthony Simmons in their linebacking core, and each one of them has made big plays. But to come out of high school, again, to catch on and to play this well, I mean, that's just fundamentally sound. You get blocked, you don't get to the quarterback, you elevate. Freshman out of Holly Hill, South Carolina, with a large play there, second and 10 for the Tar Heels. a little screen and it's picked off. Dexter McLeon, did he catch it? No. They say short hopped it because Tony Planton right there, number 96, got a piece of the ball. And it all started again, Adrian Dingle. Dingle has the ability to rush the quarterback. He had a great move coming up. See, look at this. Big guys going up trying to make athletic plays. Boy, Planton, if he were to catch that, that would have been a sight to see him lumbling, rumbling, and bumbling towards the sideline. <laughs> Third and ten for North Carolina. They have converted two third downs on this drive. They need another one. As Thomas rolls to his left. And down he goes. Mon Wilson with the sack. Wilson, the number two sack team in the conference behind North Carolina. Wilson, the sophomore, a little Tupelo honey out of 
of Tupelo, Mississippi, comes up with a sweet play for the Tigers. Mike Thomas in this play, I think, makes a good judgment call. If it's not there, you cannot afford to give up field position or another interception. Thomas punts it away towards Antoine Wyatt, who makes the fair catch at his own 33-yard line. 8.38 to play in the third quarter. Clemson up by two scores. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. The homecoming crowd having fun here in Clemson because their Tigers are up 14-0 with 8.38 to play here in the third quarter. Along with Mike Hogwood and Doc Walker, Jack Corgan, glad you could join us. Elon Green tosses it to Raymond Priester. Good block on the corner by Wyatt, and he gets it out over the 35-yard line where Omar Brown ran him out of bounds. Picked up about four on the play. Stan with the option. And Green again shows a double threat. You watch the outside block. See, that takes a lot. You're going to be a linebacker. Here's Wyatt at 190 going up against Simmons at 230. And that takes not only guts, but it takes some skill. He was able to pull it off. Well, Rick Stockstill, the co-offensive coordinator who coaches the wide receivers, spends plenty of time working on the blocking of his wideouts as Emory Smith goes north-south over the 40-yard line where Vonnie Holiday wrapped him up. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. I can't wait to watch St. Ignatius play so I can see the <laughs> wide receivers. I, you know, I just want to make sure those wide receivers, I want to see how they block. I want to see how they come out of those pass routes. You wait. I'm going to end up one Friday night on the sidelines. Lamont Pagese comes into the ball game at tailback. Raymond Priester, as Tommy West told us, nursing a hamstring problem. Green gets it to Pagese on the sidelines, and what a pop from Cabusa Bamaze. But it might not come in time for Carolina to stop the first down and when they spot the ball, Robin Wood says first down, Clemson. Mays will hit you. Great boy, Holiday. He just controlled the line of scrimmage on that play. Doesn't get the credit for it, but there's a big hit by Mays. I mean, the boost of a Mays. I mean, he brings it. 11 tackles today, and what does he have? He's got a shin. He's got a... No, no. What was the adjective I told you before? Popability. Oh, yeah, popability. All right. <laughs> Let me write it down. Let me write it down. Popability. Okay. That's the core of the probability. I like it. I'm going to have to use it again. First and ten for the Tigers. Green on the play fake. Mays coming after him, and he stepped around him, but can't get away from Brian Simmons. Good coverage downfield. They had really sent only one man deep, and there was excellent coverage downfield by Reggie Love on Joe Woods. Yeah, Reggie made that one happen. Good decision by Green. I think both quarterbacks now showed it. If it's not there, don't force it. A 14 zip game is nothing to, to gloat about. See, that's just great move there. You beat a good football player. Now you got to take your loss. Lost about a yard or so on the play. They toss it to Priester on the cutback. Priester lunges forward out to about the 47 yard line where Mays is there again along with Sean Boyd. All right, we haven't mentioned Emory Smith a lot today running the football, but watch him block. Going up against Simmons, see, that's a collision. See, that's big-time collision. Now, Simmons holds his ground, but Emory gets the job done. That's two good athletes going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Unofficially, Raymond Priester over 900 yards on the year now with 67 yards this afternoon. Third down and about six as Green rolls and fires to Wyatt for a first down inside the Carolina 45. Love and Lee are there, but Antoine Wyatt with another catch. Jack, we talk about it so often in different sports when a player is in a particular zone. I think it would qualify now for Elon Green. I mean, he's just almost just so confident now, coming out, flicking it out. Not a great pass, but they're on the money, and why it shows you why he's a special athlete, makes a great catch, goes down and pulls it in. Six catches on the day for Antoine Wyatt, and Clemson is six of ten on third down today. Green again to Wyatt for the double pass. No. Now he reverses his field and has a lot of blockers. Antoine Wyatt from a busted play to a first down. 
and a great effort by Fuzzy Lee or that might have been a touchdown. And Simmons, boy, Brian Simmons in his recovery, you're right, he saved it. Oh, it was to the house. You knew eventually this would happen. It's a natural progression off the flash pass. Flash pass and pass. Well, nowhere to go now. Watch the orange shirt. See, that's smart. Bunch in there with a nice block. And Simmons comes in and kind of disrupts that play, but to recognize that there was a change in the action and go out and attack people. Season high seven catches for Antoine Wyatt after six balls a week ago against Georgia Tech. Here's Emory Smith on the run. Smith still on his feet down near the Carolina 20 yard line. Brian Simmons slowed down the freight train from Pensacola. Yeah, I see the crowd gets behind it. People like, he, he, he represents a brutal force of Clemson football. This is it now. When your big fullback starts to take charge of a game, see, that just puts confidence. He's running over people now. I mean, that's, that's a wreck. I mean, that's a train wreck. This young man's a sophomore. It is scary. A junior make that. Emory Smith, stud. First and 10 just outside the North Carolina 20. They give it to Priester again. Smith with a huge block this time. <laughs> Only a couple of yards on the play, but we have to replay the block on Brian Simmons by Emory Smith. Oh my goodness. Those two guys, uh, they, they've met on a couple of occasions. Watch this. I've always said you block better if you get a couple of carries or a couple of catches. Watch 18 and 41, the collision and the takedown. See, that's, uh, boy, that's nice. Although Simmons kept his feet in the action. Second and that was a cockroach part. The <laughs> On their back with the arms and legs dangling. Michael Allen checks in at tailback right now on second and seven. And he'll get it on the speed option. Flag on the play. And a loss on the play. Marcus Jones scraping down the line of scrimmage with a good effort. Yeah, Marcus at 300 pounds and when you can, you're that athletic and you can keep balance, uh, you can, you got it going. Penalty against the Tigers. Let's see what North Carolina will do. Yeah, this is the drive of the game. Coach Westman, he knows that. They score now. I mean, you're talking about a tough situation to overcome. Now watch 91 hit your screw 71 make it. See, that's just. That's hard to Motion pull off at his size. On the offense, five yards and repeat second down. Tito Simpson, the freshman, number 98, was also involved in breaking up that play. Only one penalty against North Carolina, but it was large. Yeah, seven it ruined points. the touchdown. Seven-point penalty. Ball on the 23 yard Carolina line now, they, they, they just have to swell up. They need a big play defensively. Quick toss to Wyatt sidelines down near the first down marker he'll be a couple of yards shy but it's a pickup of 10 Omar Brown knocked Antoine Wyatt out of bounds this might be because Priester has a hamstring pull no matter why all I know is that it is very effective number game has worked very very nicely for Clemson that time Billups he slips and they make him pay Wyatt the junior out of Daytona Beach Florida with more than 70 yards on the day in catches. Another big third down play. Priester, first down. Priester to the five. Sean Boyd and Russell Davis on the hit, but Raymond Priester, the sophomore elementary education major, picks up another Clemson first down. Well, the marketing major, Emory Smith, puts another block on. That's E-Rock with the block. And when you can run free, a good athlete can run in a crowd. You give him some freedom, and it's going to be hard to deal with him. All you got to do is shake Emory's hand or grab his arm to know why he's called E-Rock. North Carolina was giving up less than 98 yards a game on the ground. Priester has 80 right now himself and more than 155 for the Clemson offense. Also playing with that clock too. And you can get back on the ground and start running the football. You start ticking those ticking those time ticks off the clock. And it does nothing but enhance your chances to win. 414 to play here in the third quarter. Second and goal for the Tigers. Anything more than a field goal here really puts Carolina up against it. They have been outstanding in first and goal situations. That's what they have here. Green on the option to Michael Allen. 
waffled at the three-yard line. Cavusa of amaze. Man, I'm convinced. Carolina doesn't have anybody on the field. They won't knock you out. I mean, they have some pure hitters on defense. Mays in the middle of everything. Omar Brown comes up. I think he gets in on the gang bang. Just watch this now. There's a toss. There you see good position outside. Brown with the hit. You got guys chasing over, flying to the ball. Ellis, he's there on the pile. I mean, they are competing. Tar Heels are playing hard, but they need a big play. Third and goal at the three. Anthony Downs is now in at the tailback spot. Green, play fake. In trouble. To the end zone. Good disruption on the play by Rick Terry, the defensive tackle, the junior out of Lexington, North Carolina, forced Nelon Green to throw it away. And that may loom large if Carolina hopes to rally in this one. Good call, Jack. Good call. Pringley comes up again. Here's another young man who's a, a, a youngster, a freshman, who uh, has just been active. I mean, I think this, if the Tar Heels just, if they hold this just to three, that's, they, they got to pat them back on this one. Jeff Sauve from a tough angle boots it through. 320 to play here in the third quarter. On homecoming, Clemson extends its lead. Sauve's number tells it all. The Clemson Tigers on homecoming leading North Carolina 17 to nothing. They have done it by being opportunistic on defense and by being relentless on offense. Jeff Save's field goal his 12th of the season in 17 tries. We must make one uh, statistical change for those of you who follow it along. The last two passes to Antoine Wyatt have been officially called laterals. So those are running plays for Antoine rather than pass receptions. You saw Marcus Wall awaiting the Sauve kick. Marcus will field it at his five. Trying to come straight up the field. And he is chopped down at the 25 yard line by Rudy Curry, a sophomore out of Cleveland, Ohio for the Clemson Tigers, number 81. Did he play for you? Played against us. He did. Good, good athlete. Very good athlete. Oscar Davenport has come into the ball game at quarterback here with 3:12 to play in the third quarter. You see what he has done on the year. The redshirt freshman out of Osceola High School in St. Petersburg, Florida. He's a tough kid. Began his high school career as a fullback. Did not become a quarterback till he was a junior. down he steps up and fires through the hands of Freddie Jones who has really had a tough day. Mon Wilson on the coverage. One thing about Davenport he impressed me in the limited time he's played. He has a rifle. Now here's a guy that can get it out to you. Sets up real well. See the setup a little bounce in the step ball is there. And right now Freddie's struggling. And unfortunately for North Carolina it has happened on two occasions on first down and puts them into those long yardage second and third down plays that have really been tough to accomplish much against this Clemson defense. And you can see what I'm talking about as Davenport is able to get just a couple on the option. Brian Dawkins on the hit. Yeah, you got about as much chance of turning the corner on these Tigers, although we've watched people try it now the past three weeks. And uh, I think you're going right at their strength. Hey, you watch good offensive line play up front, and you got the cross blocks, and they start taking people off, and then look at the pursuit. And it ultimately is orange crush football. They get five guys at the point of attack quicker than you can shake a stick at. Two and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. North Carolina down by 17. Davenport steps up against the blitz and finds the receiver. Octavis Barnes for the first time this afternoon. And it's a first down for North Carolina out to the 42-yard line. Andy Ford on the stop. Hard to imagine. It took him that long to get the ball in the hands of Barnes. But again, watch this young man set up. See, in control, nice route, good pass, throw and catch. He didn't allow them. the receiver didn't have to stop to get the ball. Octavius Barnes came in as the number five receiver in the conference the first time he has caught a ball this afternoon. Davenport under pressure lunges back towards the line of scrimmage. 
coach Adrian Dingle is the guy on the hit. To Mike Hogwood. Now, Andre McCoy, who tried to go on that bad ankle, uh, is not going to be able to do it. He's been held out for the rest of the game. Brian Dawkins, however, went to the locker room, got some more equipment on, and is back out and on the field. Tar Heels will face another second and long situation here in the closing moments of the third quarter. They really have to score on this possession to get back in this ball game. Blitz is on. Davenport steps up. Did he get it to Barnes? No. Octavius Short hopped it. Tigers sent everybody that time, and it was Raymond White, the defensive end, who was the first man to make contact. Yeah, he got in, but that dingle. That Adrian Dingle, he's a pass rusher. Just call him specialist. So he choked that down. Barnes gave a good effort. But when you lose, leave your feet as a receiver, that's why I like to see on the curl routes, bring it all the way back and meet the football. If you meet the football, you don't get those short hops. Now we've got an injured player, and it's Davenport. And Robin Wood stepped into the huddle and made Davenport check out. Looks like he hurt his left knee or ankle. So Mike Thomas will come back into the ball game. Well, Michael gets another shot as a senior. That's what you want to see. This kid Davenport has a crystal clear future. I mean, he is, he's got some things, folks, that uh, make you special. And I know he's disappointed. Third and 11. Three receivers set. First down as Patrick Sapp ran him out of bounds. Chris Watson, his first official catch of the afternoon, he had a touchdown called back, only his seventh catch of the year. 250 pounder. See, Mike looks good, still moving, still with the jumpy feet, but he put some put the pass right where it needed to be. I'll tell you what, that's a good decision by Daryl Moody, the offensive coordinator. You're having trouble with your tight end catching the ball. Take him out of the game, flex your fullback, and make him a tight end. Good, good move. Good move. Blitz on this time. Thomas steps up and can't make the completion as he is whacked down by Andre Carter, the strong safety who was blitzing on the play, and Raymond White was there as well to pressure Mike Thomas. Yeah, you, you have to know now that if you're Clemson, man, you're going to bring an extra guy. You're going to get as disruptive as possible. You have enough cushion at 17 zip to take a chance defensively. Watson checks out of the ball game. Maurice McGregor comes in, and he is the fullback flex to the right of Mike Thomas. Again, picked up by the Tar Heels. They find a man over the middle. It's Octavius Barnes for another first down at the Clemson 35. Andy Ford on the stop for the Tigers. See, I don't know where you stand on this, Jack, but I've never thought it was anything wrong with taking a quarterback out for a play or a series, let him get a chance to watch the game materialize and bring a guy back in. Looks like a different player, doesn't he? He does. He's calm now, and I, I always believe the competition He's the best remedy for inconsistent play. Octavius Barnes, who I think is crucial to Carolina's success, has caught two balls on this drive. Thomas going deep for Barnes. Broken up by Dexter McLean. The Clemson Tigers are thrilled. The Carolina Bench going crazy. They thought McLean interfered. It was close. But it was a nice pass again by Thomas. I don't understand why. You know, Bapp is going down the right tackle. He's going down late a lot. They're going to get caught on this. I mean, he ought to get this thing corrected. See, Mike is smooth as silk there. That's a great set throw. That really is. You know, he's. you're right. He's a little different quarterback. Second and 10 at the Clemson 35. Closing seconds of the third quarter. Clemson leading 17 to nothing. Tigers show blitz, and here they come. Picked up off the hands of Barnes and incomplete. 
Thomas had tipped. to throw it a little harder because of the pressure. I thought it was tipped. And Chris Watson is hurt on the play, so that will stop the action for the moment. Let's us tell you that the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. We've had some casualties in this game. The nature of the contact, and this is a physical ball game. We knew it would happen after the first quarter. You knew, I mean, the body can only take so much. And there's been a lot of punishment in this game. Well, Oscar Davenport was one of the guys shaken up in this game. We're going to get a report on his condition from Mike Hogwood. I tell you, Jack, he is in a lot of pain. It's his left knee. They've got him on a bench laying on his back, and he is writhing in pain. And uh, they don't know whether it's ligaments or how, exactly how bad it is, but it's pretty obvious that Oscar's done, at least for today. So it'll be up to Mike Thomas if Carolina is to rally here in the closing quarter. There is 12 seconds to play here in period number three. North Carolina has only punted the ball twice this afternoon. But for the yeah, it's two ways of looking at yeah, that. <laughs> for the third week in a row, you know, you, you reach the point now, Doc, that you have to really credit this Clemson defense. This is our third straight telecast with the Tigers. They shut out Maryland, yep. limited Georgia Tech to a field goal, and through three quarters here, minus 12 seconds, they have blank North Carolina. Now, they're, uh, they're getting it done with great pursuit, super linebacker play. You know, and the secondary has not given up much. People don't have a chance to throw on them. They, they take that away. Sapp has been a big part of that overall scheme, but Dingle, uh, Williams, Brett Williams has stepped up big. Anthony Simmons has been spectacular. Of course, to hit guys, the safeties, as you mentioned, out, Evans and Dawkins. I mean, find the guy who's not playing well. That's probably easier. And secondary has produced three interceptions today and 15 on the season. Third down, it's a four down time now for North Carolina against pressure. Thomas gets rid of it. Simmons had Linton covered. Carolina wants a penalty again, but that ball was not going to be caught by anybody. Hey, you know, Brian, you can't play Mac Brown. You got to go for it. You never know. We take another look at it again. Watch the footwork. Let's see if he set. He never really set up real strong in there. He, people talk about happy feet and the quarterback not never being ever being set. That was close. That's good coverage. Good coverage. Fourth down. They need to get to the Clemson 25-yard line. Seven seconds to play here in the third quarter. Quick toss to Leon Johnson. First down. Great play call by Daryl Moody all the way down to the 15-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. Well, you see those little heels they put on the helmet? Moody's picked up a couple of those for his hat. He got to put a few of those on his cap because that was a great call. 15 minutes for Mac Brown's Tar Heels to try and rally and for Clemson to hang on, leading by 17. Gutty called here by Carolina on fourth and ten to close out the third quarter, keeping this drive alive. Boy, I, you know, you look at Sapp there, he's engulfed up front by Babb, and I, you know, he got me on this one. I'm looking downfield. That was just great call, great recognition, good execution. Take a look at the Lee Apparel stats through three quarters of play. 227 yards of total offense for North Carolina. Leon Johnson has 124 of the 227. 82 on the ground, 42 through the air. Jonathan Linton on first down, the fullback for a couple of tough yards. Brett Williams there for Clemson. But with time a factor, Carolina knows at best they will get two more possessions after this, so they have to score every time they have the ball the rest of the way if they're to turn this one around. Yeah, and some, I mean, you need the seven pop. You want to get seven in and not have to settle for three. Sap showing blitz. Here he comes on the edge, picked up for a moment. Toss to the end zone and out of the end zone towards Marcus Wall. Patrick Sapp with the pressure. Brian Dawkins with the coverage. It's just hard to imagine. This kid played quarterback and didn't play linebacker all his life. 
Halftime in Raleigh, NC State trying to make it two wins in a row as they lead the Maryland Terrapins. The offense still struggling for Maryland. And how about that score at halftime? Jim Wait. Caldwell's Demon Deacons trying to get their first conference win. Wake's been picking it up. Mike Thomas, 9 of 22 on the day. Third down. Flips it out in the flat. Leon Johnson got away from Anthony Simmons, but stepped out of bounds. Shy of the first down. And with that tackle by Simmons, he ties the Clemson record for tackles by a first-year player, Ed McDaniel, with the old record of 104. Ed McDaniel. NFL a star. I mean, this is just a great effort by John. This guy is competing. You need four or five guys playing like that on either side of the ball to be successful. Again, they will go for No, they're going to try the field goal. Scott Caparelli is on. I thought for a moment they would go for it on fourth down. Caparelli's previous attempt was blocked. This one is through the uprights. And with 52 seconds gone in the fourth quarter, North Carolina is on the board, trailing by 14. Tradition rich Clemson football owes much of that rich tradition to that gentleman focused right there, Frank Howard Field here at Memorial Stadium, the legendary coach of the Tigers, the guy who brought the rock and dubbed this place Death Valley made it a fearful place to visit for the opposition. Scott Caparelli will kick it towards Andre Williams and Tony Horn. High short kick. Williams spun around and down at the 30 yard line. Kevin Addis with the hit. North Carolina gets on the board for the first time with a 68 yard drive. They now need their defense to rise up and get the ball back quickly. If Clemson is able to drive much at all, time becomes an increasing problem for North Carolina. And you know that's just what Tommy West wants his offense to do. Grind it out. I guess number 18 is going to get the ball then. Emory Smith, number 18, lined up in front of Raymond Priester. They give it to Priester. Huge hole. Priester out close to the 40-yard line before he's shoved back by the pursuit led by Brian Simmons. But I don't know if they caught him in a slant again, Doc, or what, but there was a giant hole. Carolina's been leaning and doing a lot of slanting with their down linemen. This time, the guys up front, Clemson, just got to pick it up, stay on color. There's Simmons in with the blitz. Yeah, he did. They caught him in that. And there's Brown again. And Omar, he's a tough guy, but he's missed some tackles today. A little bit out of control on that play. Priester gets it out to the 39-yard line for a seven-yard pickup. Lamont Pagese now in it tailback. And used a lot of the three wide receiver set. And Robert Jackson jumps off sides. Nilon, you could see by what he was doing with looking up at the scoreboard clock, was running the huddle clock down and then tried to quick snap it, and Robert Jackson missed when he was going to say it. On the offense. Five yards, pizza down. Again. Hey, for a sophomore, that's, a lot, that's thinking. That is thinking. Well, well schooled by Clyde Christensen, the quarterback's coach and co-offensive coordinator in his second year here with Tommy West. Richardson is a good one. The quarterback in his own right. He really helped uh, get the ball up in there a lot for Maryland Terrapins. Instead of second and short, it's second and eight. Pagese runs into James Hamilton out to about the 37 yard line. Leave him five yards shy of a first down. Now, the North Carolina defense coming into this game. Had a 71% success rate at stopping the op opponents on third down. Today, it has not gone that way. Clemson has converted seven of 12 third downs. So this is a giant step right here for North Carolina if they're to get back into the ball game. Green. Short hop. 
Tony Horn because of great pressure by Greg Ellis. Rick Terry and Mike Pringley as well. And they do what they wanted to, Doc. They got the three and out. Oh, Terry, strong guy, maybe one of the stronger Tar Heels. Been playing well. Could play a lot on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And big, big play. Big series for the Heels. Heels show 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Kick is away by McAnally. Wall looking up into the sun, fumbles it. Picks it back up on the 12, trying to get around the corner and still gets it back out to the 21 yard line. The fumble, unfortunately, probably cost them about 10 yards because he might have gotten it out to around the 30. Andre Carter with the stop. Next week here, it will either be the North Carolina Tar Heels hosting the Florida State Seminoles from Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, or some of you may see the Virginia Cavaliers against the Maryland Terrapins, our Exxon ACC Games of the Week. 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for which game will be shown in your area. North Carolina drove down on its last possession and got the field goal. Now Mike Thomas is looking for six. On first down, steps up and fires a rocket to Barnes. Octavius Barnes breaks a tackle. Barnes into Clemson territory at the 48-yard line. It took nearly three quarters to get Octavius Barnes into the game. He's there now, and believe it or not, Raymond White, a defensive end, made the tackle. Man, Sapp, well, Sapp almost got in. Patrick Sapp was just a shade away from a sack. Good up and inside move there on Linton. Now watch this. See, this is good recognition. Get some help. It's not a lot of help, but Walls at least put his body there. Then you break a tackle, you got guys throwing downfield. L.C. Stevens, and that's what it takes. Raymond White, a 255-pound sophomore defensive end, is the guy who ends up making the tackle here. He never gives up. See, he just keeps going, and you just applaud young men like that. That's worth a double milkshake, just on effort alone. Three catches for 61 yards in the second half for Octavius Barnes. They show blitz again, and they throw the quick toss to Leon Johnson. Johnson for a couple to the 46-yard line. Raymond White again with excellent pursuit to make the tackle. Yeah. On the previous play, excuse me, Doc, L.C. Stevens was hurt, but he is up and will be back, uh, I would think, into action for North Carolina. Yeah, good move on that. I was just talking a little bit about Bab out front, Honeycutt, and you know, Jack, offensive linemen, they can't check up and look for color. They got to run through it because you got a guy twice as fast as you in back of you, and they lost a block on that play. Second and seven. Again, they show blitz. Here they come. Johnson fights through traffic down to the 40-yard line. Anthony Simmons with another hit. Leon Johnson nearing 100 yards on the afternoon. 88 unofficially. Yeah. Representatives of the Peach Bowl here on site. You want to earn it and play in the big time. Somebody's got to drop the level, get a good gut charge. And this is it. This guy here, number 12, Leon Johnson. They give it to the fullback, Linton. And Jonathan will have the first down for Carolina at the Clemson 38-yard line. Stops the clock momentarily with 10.29 to play here in the fourth quarter. Clemson leading 17 to three, but it has been North Carolina moving the ball over the last five minutes of game time. They're somewhat taking this game over since Oscar Davenport went out with injury. New life for Mike Thomas, and so far, he's played like a senior on to. Clemson rolls everybody up close as Thomas rolls left. Has time going downfield for Barnes and incomplete. Barnes and Dexter McLean got tangled up. The two officials looked at each other and I think decided the ball was beyond the reach of Barnes. I don't think North Carolina feels that way. And Octavius is still down. Not at all. As you watch this, I mean, going for the ball. You'd like to think inadvertent, I think it was, two athletes going forward, but you watch. By here, could he or would he have had a chance at that football? And again, those guys have to make a split decision. They don't get instant replay. No, they don't. And, and the other aspect of that contact sometimes, Doc, is the officials have to see 
who might have initiated the inadvertent contact. It might have been the, the feet of Barnes tangling with Dawkins. I mean, it's hard to say who did it, and sometimes the best call is no call no. at all. And I, again, we get the benefit of instant replay. They didn't. And on the decision four, to make that call right there, I think it was a good call. Exactly 10 minutes to play as Octavius Barnes will catch a breather on the sidelines. The sophomore from Wilson, North Carolina, sociology major. Runner up for ACC Rookie of the Year last year. We might be looking at the ACC Rookie of the Year this year in Anthony Simmons, the middle linebacker for Clemson. Off the close. Anthony Pondexter for the Cavaliers, who's really impressive. Thomas with time dumps it again out to Johnson. He tries to run by. Anthony Simmons, but couldn't do it as Simmons roadblocks him down at the 35 yard line. And it's Johnson who comes up hobbling. It'll be a third and seven. Yeah, but he's got the heart of a spark. There's no way he's going to not be in this football game. He's got six receptions on the afternoon. He has also carried the ball 23 times, so 29 touches in the ball game already for Leon Johnson. He just needs his teammates to kind of get on his level. Look at this, no interception since he got back to the ball game. 7 of 12. That's winning football. Blitz is on. Thomas stands up and fires incomplete. Diving try by Octavius Barnes inside the 20, and he couldn't come up with it. It'll make it fourth down, and trailing by 14, you know Mac Brown is going to go for it. Oh yeah, Williams and Dick Williams and Bram Dawkins again. See the thing about Clemson, and I like what they're doing. Man, they're going to make it as rough on you as possible. They're bringing everybody, and if you can hang in and take this, you get a shot. Miles Eldridge and Ellis Johnson, the co-defensive coordinators, sending everybody. That ball was close. They have to get to the 28-yard line. Thomas fires, complete, first down, Marcus Wall. Mike Thomas stood in there tall and found his fellow classmate, senior Marcus Wall, for the first down. Oh, now I get it. They must have slipped him in at halftime. Somebody else in that uniform, that's his twin brother. He got rid of that guy in the first half. This guy here, now look at that. Picture perfect spiral set in there. You want to pressure catch and throw? You just saw one. Nine and a half minutes to play. First down, Carolina inside the Clemson 25. Thomas delayed handoff. Leon Johnson inside the 15, close to another first down. Antoine Edwards on the stop. Puts Johnson just shy of 100 yards on the day, 98 unofficially. And these two guys, this is a gutsy deal again. That offensive line, everybody's tired, but they're giving it their all. Talk about gut check, a show of heart. Both teams trying to display it to the max here in the fourth quarter at Death Valley. Thomas on second and short. Little swing pass to Barnes. Octavius has a first down at the eight yard line. That little fold screen, pretty well defended by Clemson. Well, that's what you want. I mean, you just want to have a shot. You're trying to get percentages. You're trying to get mismatches out on the edge. Get your skilled people out in space. But see, there's Simmons. Look at that. The guy does a split and still tries to get back in on it. Liam on Evans credited with the tackle. First and goal for North Carolina. The last time they were here, they had a touchdown called back and then eventually had a field goal blocked. Thomas busted play. Mike will keep it himself. Inside the five, lunges down close to the two. The senior from Hamlet, North Carolina, on a broken play, nearly got it into the end zone. And it helped him. The fact that it was a broken play helped him. You talk about a key breaker, breaking reads. See, now if he would go now, he might have scored. He might have scored. It's still a good effort. Got to protect that football. Nice move. Second and goal, just outside the Clemson two. In Carolina's last game, they stopped Wake Forest at the goal line. They don't want to be denied here by the Clemson defense. Jonathan Linton carries it close to the goal line, but not in. He looks off the close. If he's not there, I want to see this spot. 
touchdown. One official said no, the other said touchdown, and Jonathan Linton is credited with the Carolina score. Yeah, the big people up front made this one work. I mean, the Tigers were fighting, but see, they were too high. Orange shirts are too high. The white shirts are low, and you got a back that's determined. That's the score for the Heels. Well, the discussion still goes on, and it is a touchdown. You can see from that angle, I think the official on this side watched the ball and didn't know if it crossed the plane. The official on the other goal line saw that the body was clearly in the end zone and ruled touchdown. Scott Caparelli on to try and make it a seven point ball game. With half the fourth quarter yet to play. The conversion is good and now it's a 17 to 10 ball game. Mac Brown and Mike Thomas trying to rally the troops. This one is not over in Death Valley. Half of this final period yet to be played. Scott Caparelli will kick it off for Clem for Carolina. Clemson with Andre Williams and Tony Horn deep coming towards Williams at his own five. And he'll take it to the 20 and that's it where he is wrapped up by Ronald Thomas a junior out of Patterson New Jersey Carolina after forcing a three and out drove 79 yards in 12 plays Jonathan Linton with the touchdown run they converted a couple of crucial third and fourth down situations on the drive and right now Neilon Green has to rally his troops to try and run down some of that clock. He's played well. He just got to, at this point, not try to get it all in one play. Last possession, it was the first three and out of the ball game for the Tigers. Lamont Pagis, the tailback, with a good surge for about eight yards before he is wrapped up by James Hamilton. Back to Mike Hogwood on the field. Doc's talking a moment ago about Mike Thomas playing more like a senior. He's acting like a senior right now. He's been over on the sidelines. He's hit everybody on offense, walked up to him and said, hey, we're going to win this game. Hey, we're going to win this game. He's been a real leader over here, and he's got this team believing. Well, he's got to hope his defense, Mike, can shut down Clemson. Good first down numbers for Lamont Pagese there, the eight-yard pickup. Yeah, a big block, Will Young had a monster block. They give it to Smith. Emery stacked up, and where they have spotted it, he crossed the 30-yard line and picked up the first down. James Hamilton is there again for the Tar Heels. Hamilton just about everybody else. Abusa Mamey still limping. I mean, a lot like Johnson just playing off sheer guts. Do you see a two linebacker stack? And see, like, look at the Roundtree crawling, trying to get a block. So this is what this game is all about. Trying to do anything it takes to get to a big bowl game. I just love to see the effort. Both sides really just giving a tremendous effort. Clemson trying to go to six and three on the year, five and two in conference play. Carolina trying to go to five and three on the year in the start of a huge four-game stretch. Pagis whacked by Mays after a pickup of just a couple. The gift to for a gain of two yards on the play. Dwayne Morgan had a nice block on that. I mean, round two, Morgan Putman going up against that Tar Heel group. Look at that score. Maryland with a couple of third quarter touchdowns, their first touchdowns in over three weeks to have the lead at Raleigh. And Georgia Tech down at one point has rallied to take the lead against Wake Forest. So everything is tight in the ACC here today. Quick toss. Antoine Wyatt slips a tackle and another. But there are too many white shirted Carolina defenders there and it'll be a third and long for Clemson. Man, isn't it amazing what points will do for a defense? And these guys now are playing on a higher plane, a new spirit, flying out to the football. Clemson had a lot of success with this play. See, a missed tackle ought to mean at least five yards. Not when you got guys swarming to the ball like that. I mean, that's a lot of blue and white shirt. Third down and six. Clemson seven of 13 on third down this afternoon. The one back set behind Neilon Green. The option, busted play, and Green goes down. Green went, went left, and Pagese went right. Greg Ellis is there, and the Tigers will have to kick it away again. Yeah, and his offensive line went right. 
And it looked like uh, Glenn Roundtree, Morgan, these guys thought it was coming onside. We've had this happen now twice. Well, quarterbacks are either going the wrong way or the backs are going the wrong way. And in any respect, this is not the time to break down fundamentally. And with 450 to play and the clock moving, North Carolina decides to use the first of its timeouts to stop the clock. Tommy West greatly concerned on the home sidelines. The bowl situation, of course, the, the top four teams in the conference go to bowl games provided they have the required number of wins and it was back in 1981 when this Clemson team went all the way in bowl competition to a national championship behind quarterback Homer Jordan. You can see the situation in terms of the bowl game second place Gator Bowl third place Peach Bowl fourth place the Carquest Bowl and the ACC champion will go to one of four bowls on New Year's Day and right now with the victory by Virginia they have one more conference win at six and one than five and one Florida State and then you have teams like Clemson and North Carolina and Maryland and others battling for those other two spots as Chris McAnally gets a high but short kick away Marcus Wall watches it bounce and it takes a North Carolina bounce down at the 37 yard line 63 yards to perhaps a tying or winning score for North Carolina with 440 to play 17 10 Clemson North Carolina at the Clemson or at the Carolina 37 yard line with 440 to play Mike Thomas struggled to start the ball game at 6 for 14 this is what he has done since then He'll throw it on first down with time. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Adrian Dingle. Tony DeSue was also in the neighborhood. Well, when they look at these films, Brian Dawkins has had an all-star performance, but Adrian Dingle, uh, he might end up grading out as high as anybody on that Tiger defense. Look at him there. He's smart enough to get, grab the back, try to slow him up coming through, then get up and block that pass. This kid's a freshman. My goodness. Thomas again to throw on second down, has time. Dumps it over the middle and is caught by Leon Johnson for a pickup of about four on the play. Anthony Simmons there to cover him. Good downfield coverage by the Tigers, who right now will go to their dime package with six defensive backs. Leon with his, Johnson with his seventh catch of the day. And the Tigers need a big play on defense now. They gotta do reverse rolls. Simmons again. Octavius Barnes was open at the first down marker, but Simmons broke it up. He is 205 pounds playing middle linebacker as a true freshman in one of the better conferences in the country. Yeah, his heart must weigh about 150 pounds, though. He's got 15 tackles on the day. And North Carolina will punt the ball away with time still enough on the clock if your defense can hold they don't want to give up the field position can't afford to field goal now kills them if Clemson were to score Mike Thomas boots it away there was nobody deep down to the 25 yard line of the Tigers with 352 to play calculated risk by Mac Brown but I think the correct choice now he's got time. I, you know, when you go to the yard marker, you threw right into the teeth of the defense. There was three on one in that. You like to go back to the way he ran that little screen play to Johnson early on, but give Clemson some credit, man. They've been playing this thing well defensively, and it was their turn to come up with a big play. Now it's their turn for their offense to come up with at least two first downs. Yeah. Nobody to blame for this one. No excuse football. You, you get it or you give it up. Lamont Pagese is the tailback. He gets the call and gets hammered after a gain of just a couple. Cavusa Vomes is there again along with Rick Terry. Mays slow to get up. 
Mays and Simmons, the two middle linebackers, have been incredible this afternoon. Yeah, I just hope Kabusma doesn't have any 8 o'clock classes on Monday because he's going to have a hard time getting there. I mean, this guy, he's in a tremendous amount of pain. He's just playing right now off guts and adrenaline. Three wide receivers to Breen's left. Pagese, the lone setback. Green on the option will go right into the arms of Greg Ellis, who tries to rip the football away. And it'll be a third down and long. North Carolina takes time, and the Tiger faithful a little concerned about the conservatism on offense. But they don't want to make the big mistake no. that will cost you possession of the ball. The way their defense is playing, that they'll be okay. It's just that you can sense now. We watched them against Georgia Tech, and they were able to run the football. And Tech, at the time, you know, was one of the top-rated defenses in the country. Carolina has shown that you know there's not a lot of things you can do against them if they make up their mind that they don't want you to. North Carolina came in allowing just 229 yards in total defense. They have given up much more than that against. Clemson here this afternoon, but very little since falling behind 17 to nothing. Now, again, granted that Clemson wanted to get a little more conservative to be safe, yeah. but at the same time, that North Carolina group, Doc, had to dig down and find some inner resource to, <laughs> to give their team a chance to win, and to their credit, they've done it. No, inner resource, a fancy word for guts, but... I like it, and I can use that as well. I'll get that with you, know, but <laughs> you know. But a lot of times, people, you know, across the country, have, this year in particular, you know, have questioned Carolina. The fact that they have so much talent sometimes don't always play at that level. But don't ever question their guts or their courage because they have played. They're here at Death Valley. They have won here in six shots, and they're here now going toe to toe with the Clemson club that is that is red hot. Clemson has lost only one game on homecoming since 1970. They're 22 1 and 2 on homecoming. Clemson has had the ball only 24 plays in the second half. Quick little toss to Pegues. Pegues looking for running room, but he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Ball popped loose. But it had been blown dead, and they will be short of the first down, and they'll have to kick it away. Rick Terry with the stop on Pegues at the 35-yard line. Clock moving with 240 to play. See the body language on Tommy West right there. For one of two more yards, a yard and a half maybe, they could have put this one away. Instead, North Carolina uses its last timeout to stop the clock with 241 left. With that much time, Doc, and the ability to stop the clock in a variety of ways, that is more than enough time for the Tar Heels. And maybe their best weapon of all will be, I would think, show the block on to keep the Clemson punt unit in close and hope that Marcus Wall, one of the best kick returners in college football, can break loose with another one. Yeah, you got to fake the block because if they could get into a return, with a guy like Marcus, it would definitely be to their advantage. We still got a packed house. I mean, no one has walked out of Death Valley. I mean, this game is still pretty much in question. Although you have to like Clemson's shot right now, being up by seven, 241 on the clock. But momentum has definitely decided to change uh, sidelines. Chris McAnally will punt it away. They show block. McAnally hammers it. Wow. 65 yard punt by Chris McAnally. North Carolina will have to go 80 yards if they want to pull this one out. What a kick by the senior from Troy, Michigan. Special teams. We saw it in the Florida State Virginia game. And how they're punting both sides uh, really had a, had a big influence on the outcome of that ball game. That was the longest kick of the season and the career of Chris McAnally. And it came at the biggest moment in his Clemson career. Crowd rising.
rising to its feet here in Death Valley as Mike Thomas goes back to pass on first down. Going deep downfield. Intercepted. Dexter McLeon with the interception. And the Clemson Tigers come up with their fourth pickoff of the day. Well, you can see the disappointment on the face of Matt Brown, but there's only one way to throw a deep pass. And you hear it so much that I, you may not like to hear it, but it's down and outside the way. Good coverage. That's just excellent coverage when a quarterback can slow a receiver up and not really engage in him. Make it keep looking back at the football. That ball's got to be out and over the outside shoulder. Either the receiver gets it or nobody gets it. Fourth interception of the day, second of the season for Dexter McLean. And the key part of that interception, as Doc Walker told you, the ability to slow down the wide receiver and, in effect, become the receiver yourself. He did. He did. That was nice. They give it to Raymond Priester straight ahead for only a yard. I mean, they may get the football back yet again, but the, the point being is that the receivers, too, got to take some responsibility. Man, you got to do whatever you can to avoid a deep ball being picked off. Yeah, you take, the inter you take the interference. Take, take anything. Yep. You know, you kick the guy, you get thrown out of the game if you have to. You do anything but let a guy catch a pass like that. What an effort by that man, Caboose of Amaze. Yeah, just. As Doc said, they have to get a first down to avoid giving the ball back to North Carolina. They toss it to Priester. And he gets a couple out to the 39-yard line. He'll be five yards shy. 90 seconds to play in the game. Hamilton and Mays there again. Waiting for Robin Wood to mark the ball and play, and he does right now with 1.22 to play, meaning they'll have to snap it with 57 seconds left. And then would have to do something on fourth down, probably take the delay a game penalty and then punt it away. But without a first down, they cannot run away with the rest of the clock. I sure like to see these two teams play a best of five series. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Third and a long four. They give it to Priester, and he'll be shy of the first down. 50 seconds with the clock running. Cavusa of Amaze for about the 455th time this afternoon in on a hit, or it seems that way anyhow. Just call that Tar Heel defense amazing company. They can run it down inside of 20 seconds before they would get the delay of game call. Right now, the 17 seconds, and you can see Neilon Green will wait until there is one second on the huddle clock as he stands alongside of Robin Wood. And then we'll call the timeout. Four, three, two, and it's right there with one second left on the huddle clock. 17 to 10, North Carolina will have one desperate chance left when we return to Death Valley. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? By Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. By Ice Brewed Ice House, ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. Chris McAnally with 18 seconds left, hit a 65-yarder his last punt. He does anything close to that again. Carolina puts pressure on, and it's another dandy. Wall at his 10. Trying to get to the wall. by Andre Carter with six seconds to play. And all North Carolina can do is hope for a miracle of biblical proportions here on this what will probably be the final play of the game. If not, it'll be seven straight losses here in Death Valley to Clemson and nine of their last ten meetings overall. The Tigers. 
I mean, a rare win for them to this year. Only their second home win if they hang on. Mike Thomas will roll to his left, set his feet, and throw it as far as he can into a crowd. It is caught by Octavius Barnes and then pulled out of his hands by Peter Ford, and that will do it. The Clemson Tigers win their fourth in a row and go to five and three on the season in a heart-stopping 17 to 10 triumph over the North Carolina Tar Heels. And I still love to see the best out of five series in this one. This was pure football. Clemson staying strong again on homecoming as they win for the 23rd time since 1970. Tommy West is with our Mike Hogwood. And he's holding his son who's awfully proud of what dad's done today. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I tell you what. I don't know what the world's record is for holding your breath, but I believe I broke it. The defensive backs come up with four picks today. One of them they returned for a touchdown. They played awesome. They did. We, Our kids play hard. I thought our coaches had a great plan. Our assistant coaches do a great job. And, uh, it's, it's just great. And uh, well, you're on a roll now. You won a game at home. How about that? <laughs> We're thankful for everything we've got. All right. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike. All right, that's Tommy West, and as you can see, they love their coach here at Clemson. Upstairs now to Jack. All right, Mike, you can hear him chanting Tommy, Tommy in the background. A big win for Clemson as they beat North Carolina 17 to 10. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Welcome back to Death Valley along with Mike Hogwood and Rick Walker, Jack Corrigan. A great victory for the Clemson Tigers as they go to six and three on the year now and if they can win one of their final two games of the season they would be eligible for a bowl game again after not making a bowl appearance last year and the fans here on homecoming enjoying it to say the least. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Jefferson Pilot Sports players of the game and there could have been a lot of candidates for this one. Gutty effort by Leon Johnson the North Carolina player of the game as he totaled nearly 160 yards of offense this afternoon against that fine Clemson defense and our Clemson player of the game is the young man who has been the most surprising guy of this 95 season 15 tackles to lead the way for the Tigers and Anthony Simmons now the true freshman out of Spartanburg South Carolina has 109 tackles with two games to play that sets a Clemson freshman record beating the mark set by Ed McDaniel who now plays for the Minnesota Vikings and Doc we talked about the effort both ways there was just extreme physical play today and emotional play today you could tell that both these teams knew what was on the line and they were able to to really give every ounce they had in a game that wasn't decided until the final play even more the reason why I'm amazed is Simmons and now he's able to make that move from high school to uh, to college and Spartanburg High School still undefeated they got a great program I think that's where it starts guys who come out of great high school programs are well coached to jump into this this was just a beautiful football game it's like a low scoring two to one baseball game and one of great pitching this was great hitting on both sides and it just took one mistake here or there we'll go back to the illegal motion by Carolina that took that touchdown away from them they were never able to recover and ironically that was the only penalty of the ball game against North Carolina Let's take a look at the Ford final stats for this one and you can see how close this game was as North Carolina rallied in the fourth quarter to make it very interesting. That one penalty that negated the touchdown pass to Chris Watson early in the ball game loomed as the pivotal play of the game. You hate to put it down to one point. It really isn't to one play. But when they look back on it, Carolina will really regret that mistake. Yeah, and uh, Dav Davenport with the injury. Uh, Thomas comes back, and his twin brother in the second half played as well as he played until that very last play. North Carolina will somehow have to regroup after this emotional loss and gear themselves up for a battle against the Florida State Seminoles next Saturday at Keenan Stadium while the Clemson Tigers will stay here and move on as they try and get themselves into a bowl game when they play the Duke Blue Devils. We'd like to thank uh, all the people who have done a great job for us here this afternoon. You see their names being flashed across the screen. As always, the Jefferson Pilot crew does an outstanding job. 
Next week, we'll have two games to show you here on the ACC Football Network. Some of you will see Florida State against North Carolina. Others will see Virginia against Maryland. 12 o'clock, check your local listings for the time and the station in your area. Jefferson Pilot Sports Staff, outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlanta Coast Conference football. For Mike Hogwood and Doc Walker, this is Jack Corgan saying so long from Death Valley, where it was a happy homecoming for the Clemson Tigers as they edged the North Carolina Tar Heels 17 to 10. So long, everybody.